I grew up knowing two dudes without tongues. That's Florida. <laughs> Tongueless Brett and Haw. <laughs> In this dream, I said, I want to go find my wife. In a dream? You already got her in real I life, 24-7. I got Adriana Chechik. <laughs> my wife is a redneck. Discipline your dog with a shovel kind of redneck. Like, <laughs> spit on a light bulb to watch it bubble for fun. You ever sink a boat? No, I tried to. <laughs> what the I fucking love your questions. <laughs>Calm down, Jeff. Great what do you think is going on? What? We ain't got no sponsors. This show don't make no money. Welcome back to Impulsive, the not money making show. <laughs> the number one not money making show <laughs> in the world. A show where we don't make money. Uh, if you guys aren't subscribed, honestly, nah, I'm changing it up. If you are subscribed, unsubscribe. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> and you're and on if one. you were gonna like this video, don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't you do we're it. We're here today in WeHo. We're in West Hollywood, another beautiful house. For sale. Destroyed the bathroom upstairs. <laughs> Whoops. And Yo, I'm sure Bert is destroying the bathroom right now. <laughs> Dude, can I get a little more uh, volume in my headphones, please? Just a, just turn me up just a tad bit, dude, so I can hear anything. Man, shut your... So. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. Sorry. Oh, my God. We're going to have to put a PG rating on it. It was the land before time. You want... Dude, dude, dude. Bert's watching? got a crew. You got a... You, no, you got a squad. This is unlike anything I've seen. Yeah, check... Check, 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 check me out if nothing's happening. Check, check, now it is. Hello. Dude, Bert Kreischer just rolled in here with a harem of beautiful women. At this is, a, this at, is wild, Bert. I did not expect dude, He brought a gang with him. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> Are any of them Russian? <laughs> dude. Did, did, we got an intro for you. Oh, yeah? You don't just have to stand there the whole time, but I, 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 yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Dylan wrote it, so if you hate it, just the guy to your right, just give him a little smack. Whoops. Our guest today has a new comedy special, Razzle Dazzle, on Netflix, and a new movie, The Machine, opening May 26, based on his true life encounter with the Russian mob. I cannot wait to get into that. You can catch him on his tour this summer at the Fully Loaded Comedy Fest, along with his friends. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Burt Kreischer. Burt, 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 How are you, Bert. brother? It's an honor. I'm a fan. Dude, we're, we're fans. fans. No, man, I can tell you the moment I became a fan. Uh -oh. oh shit! I can. I, I remember. Uh, I'm gonna move this up. Yeah, do you think? I was in Serbia. I was shooting my movie, <laughs> and uh, your brother had pulled Floyd's hat off. Ah! <laughs> so, <laughs> so no, no, but that's not the moment. Oh, this is the moment. So I'm in my bed. I'm watching. I'm just kind of watching it. You know, when you just are sort of like, you're not into it. You're just kind of. Yeah. And you and your brother get into a fight in front of your mom about him stealing your thunder, which Im immediately is a fight that happens in my family all the time. Yeah. You and your brother get on a private jet, and uh, and you have a moment, and you and you're like, "Hey, I love you." And he's like, "I'm sorry." And he goes, "Hey, Logan," and he takes your hat off your head. Yeah. I sit up in my bed, <laughs> laughing hysterically. I go, "All right, I'm in on both these motherfuckers. Yeah. These are my guys. Yes, I, can't, I gotta dude. fucking, I gotta love them." So. Yes. And the podcast is fucking awesome, man. Thanks, I love the man. interviews you do with all the comedians. It's, it's 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 different. I almost I almost pulled out of this podcast because Schultz pranked me with a fucking clown, and I was like, I'm I'm like, there that'll be exactly what this interview is. Clowns everywhere, balloons. Everyone thinks we're gonna fuck with them. Yeah. <laughs> kill the, kill <laughs> kill the clowns. Kill the clown. <laughs> nah, put him put him put him put him back. Uh, I I did see the clown thing. Um, we were told in our brief. <laughs> don't wonder, break fucking clowns. No, we did. I wonder if we I did. can even read it. It was they said it's the one thing that's off limits. They said don't do not bring a clown. Don't mention clowns. Don't laugh like a clown. Don't even mention Andrew Schultz. Dude, that's was, what they said to us. You know? I was so out of control on that podcast and I was embarrassed because I didn't know how I behaved. Normally when you're on a podcast, you represent yourself. Yeah. Second the clown came in, I shut down, I froze, and I couldn't be funny. I couldn't turn it around. And I was like, I was like, fuck, now everyone knows my weakness. Bring out clowns and I shut down. <laughs> so now it's my turn to gas you up. So what you're describing here is the reason why I'm a fan. It's the reason why I, along with I, I think probably a lot of people really like you is you're this really funny, jovial spirit, but you're also like kind of emotional and oh. and, and you, you you wear it on your sleeve and we can like relate to it and we see it and you've chosen online to be vulnerable at, at, at points, which I love from comedians. It's yeah. it's the one thing with comedians that sometimes I feel a little bit of a disconnect is that they're always joking. Yeah. And I'm not sure when when they're real. 
you know, Theo Vaughn, what, what is he a real person? I'm not, I'm not so sure about that, dude. Right. What, is, how, how I've known him for 20 years. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I've like, been sitting with him at times, and he's like, are you doing a bit right now? Like, well, how do we know? How do we know? <laughs> nah, but you've, you've um, been one of the people in this new age media that has decided to open up your life and your feelings, and and we love it, Bert. And so we're honored to have you on. I'm glad you didn't cancel. No clowns are coming. <laughs> I like that he's always doing that. So, I like so that he's always smiling. smiling. Sometimes I'm not sure when I see you doing it if you're actually happy or if you're in some kind of pain. No. Because that smile is so big and infectious, and I just am curious sometimes. So I have, I think I have this, first of all, I have like a punitive brain. So like I wake up, if I'm hungover, I wake up, I force myself to work out. And I force myself to, I'll get on Instagram and do like a story. And that'll kind of change my thing around. Doing podcasts, it's the easiest way for me to connect and get like into who I am again. Mm -hmm. And so I really, like this is probably more of who I am than it, when, like when I'm on a podcast. I'm super honest to a fault, I think. Um, but yeah, man, I, I got, I, I don't know. I've, I've had a few times where I've shared emotions. Like, like the first, I'll tell you the first time I ever really, really did it was when we did Sober October with Joe for the first time. Oh, yeah, that's right. And he asked me how much I drank. And I was like, and it's one of those moments where like, because no one really knew the jungle we were going into with podcasting. You didn't know that it could really fuck your career up mm. that, or that it could really help your career or how to do either or. And all I was like, I've never lied. I'm just going to tell the truth. And I was like, I have like nine drinks a night. And I know that I'm kind of telling the truth. But Segura's next to me. And he starts laughing hysterically. And he's <laughs> like, and Joe, Joe's, I don't know how well you know Joe, but he can get super depressing at times. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes, buddy. And Segura's laughing. He goes, they're doubles, Joe. Uh, these aren't nine. These are doubles. 18, these have 18, 18 drinks a night. <laughs> oh, and and Joe just freaks dude. out. We need to get you a doctor. We need to get you in, like, gets into serious Joe mode. But, like, those moments I overshare and I, I, I you know, like, Chris DiStefano and I cried on my on my podcast. That's the that's the one that I saw. Yeah. Right? It was it was about your, your kids. Yeah. Right? And, and it's, uh, but I don't know. I don't know any other way to represent it. Then just be 100% honest. Is it weird that you feel more open when the cameras are on yeah. and more yourself? Like, that, uh, yeah, that's something to explore a little I bit. I will, you know, it's, <laughs> it's the it's the thing I liked. Like, I never liked comics. I mean, I liked them, but I never liked the comics where you met them and then they were totally different off stage. Uh, like, I'll, I can say it about uh, because he's my friend, but like Dane Cook, I remember watching Dane Cook on stage. Uh, you guys weren't even out of high school yet or grade school. It was fucking frenetic amazing spectacular it was like watching the first caveman make fire or the first guy make a snickers bar and go here try that I mean, it was so, and then you met dane and he was very quiet and shy and you were like wait what the fuck you got yeah. gypped yeah yeah and I, gypped, I remember i remember yeah. trying to work a foursome with him and i was like wait, what do you mean by that me and him and two girls yeah um, yeah oh yeah like yeah. And what was the problem was he just super shy no he's just he, dane is a very like he's just well, i don't know like, i don't know i'd rather go play i bought a 12 pack of beer he's like i don't drink Dane could got, like lame cock wow <laughs> that's like oh uh, nah I, I was gonna because we have one of those stories too. We have. A, I'll, I'll be honest. We've talked about it before. We have one of those stories too. Where now he's got a wife and shit. But we we had a situation where we attempted to do that as well, and he became Dane Cook in the situation. Yeah, it's not. It's not Dane's fault. He oh, no. said you know, the only thing he got out before he ran screaming and crying from the group scenario yeah. was his knee touched my elbow. His knee touched my elbow. It Bro, did. he was so shocked by the fact that my knee had made contact with his elbow that he couldn't take it. He can't, just, can't, can't, he just can't touch ran, your boys bro. in an orgy. <laughs> Cannot Look, dude, touch your boys in an orgy. I wish we had video of this awkward foursome. <laughs> It was so fucking hilarious. I couldn't stop drinking. I couldn't turn it off. I was the comedian. Dane is like, what the fuck are we doing? These two girls are down to fuck. And we just, Dane's going, I'm going home. I'm playing video games. <laughs> and he left. I stayed there, spent the night. I ended up moving in with those two girls. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's my personality. Okay, okay, okay. So this is another thing we wanted to mention. You're from Florida, right? Yeah. And, and then you say things like this, and, and your life has taken a lot of twists and turns. At one point, what, there was, a, there was an article. Rolling Stone magazine. Rolling Stone. A six and, half page article about me coming the number one party animal in the country. Well, you're like 22 years old when this 25. happened? 25. I was, I was like a seven-year senior. Oh. <laughs> well, at, at, what was it? Florida, Florida State? State. Florida yeah. State. Fun. Massive, massive party the school. The funnest time of my fucking life. Right. I mean, oh. They, they wrote an article about you for being a party animal. Yeah. You yeah. really were the machine international, and internationally renowned I think, party I animal. I think when I met the Russian mafia is when I turned it on. Oh, uh, you really, you got yeah. into the role. Yeah, but well, I, I never was like a big drinker until I met them. And then when I met them, I realized if I drank, we would have fun. 
And it was like almost like everything was looser and more fun. And then when I came home, my chick that I've been dating for five years cheated on me with my best friend. And so I just was like, oh, I'm not showing you emotion. I'm not going to let you know that I'm hurt. I'm having a good time. I'm partying. And we cranked it up. And then I moved into this house. And then next thing you know, Rolling Stone calls. And, and I'm in the middle of a bong hit about to play frisbee disc golf. And the guy's like, can I hang out with you for like five days? And I exhaled a bong hit. And he's like, were you just doing a bong hit? And I was like, oh, yeah. He was like, I found the right guy. And then they wrote an article about me. Changed my life. Changed my life entirely. Oliver Stone option the rest of my life. I moved to New York, started stand-up. Six months later, Will Smith discovered me. See, so is, can you, is there any chance you can just stop? For a second, what you just yeah. did right there is yeah. gave us 400 different like exit <laughs> routes. Like I could go into either. You you talked about the Russian mob, Will Smith, Van Wilder. We could talk about FSU yeah. bong rips with you know double threesome prostitutes. Tate, <laughs> Dane Cook. Like dude, I don't know where to go with you. I want to start where it all started, which is Florida. Like, yeah. do you th are you the Florida man? Uh, we, yeah. think, we think you're just a successful Florida man. I am 100. <laughs> I, I, when people go, why do you take your shirt off? No one asks me that when I'm in Florida. They go, yeah, he takes his shirt off. They, <laughs> they have their shirts off too. Dude, that's the, what you do. Shit gets out of control. You rip your fucking shirt off. That's what you fucking do. The Florida man's real though, right? Oh. Like the, the Florida man uh, wrestles alligator in the street. Dude, I beats grew up him with shopping cart. I grew up knowing knowing two dudes without tongues. That's Florida. <laughs> Tongueless Brett and haw. I swear to God. Saw a dude get struck by lightning twice. I mean, no, Florida, dude, Florida come was, on. when we moved into our neighborhood, the big kids, I was telling them the other day, the big kids were like, came in with BB guns and they're like, hey, we're going to hunt you. And we're like, huh? And they're like, you got to the count of 10. And we're like, well, Oh, I don't think we want to be hunted. And they're like, 10. <laughs> and then when they caught you, they put ice cubes up your asshole. It was a fucking, that's Florida for you. Was it, that was, and that was pre-bath salts, right? That's, oh, that's, well, oh, this is like, <laughs> this is, like, I was there for the first generation of Florida men. Those were all my uncles. Those uh, guys came uh, down because uh. they want, they heard you could get a H, go to HCC, like a community college down there, get a degree, live on the beach, bartend, bang chicks, clean Coke. Coke was all over Florida then. Right. And, uh. Do you ever, do you ever try crack? No. <laughs> No. No. Nasty drug. Yeah. Nasty drug. I'm always curious about your experiences with drugs. <sighs> Nasty I know you don't times. go into it too much, but I've heard you no, talk about I, it. A no, bit. I do. I do. I just think some people are sick of hearing hearing about it. You know? I want to say something actually on that note. Just just I g I gotta give you some credit, dude, because uh, we joke about it a lot. Like, oh Mike always talks about drugs. Uh, he won't stop sending his book to my house. <laughs> um, signed. <laughs> and, 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 but but uh, man, you see the comments, and uh, even just one conversation about your rehabilitation can can help if it helps one person. Yeah, right, we've won. for sure. So, so but, like we joke about you talking about it too much, but I think that story. But there's is also just limitless. there's also just a lot to like unpack. Like I was even thinking about it today before I came here because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about <clears throat> crack. <laughs> Just because I just wasn't sure if you ever tried. Because you no. seem like somebody who would try crack. It is true. To yeah. be honest. We were, no, I, I've never done crack. Tommy and I were, we were joking about trying it on our podcast. It, live on air. Uh, NASCAR's 75th anniversary season is now in full swing with drivers giving it all they've got to lock in a playoff spot. This weekend, NASCAR takes on the biggest and baddest track, the Talladega Super Speedway. This beast is two and a half miles of nothing but pure speed and always puts on a legendary show. The top drivers of NASCAR Cup Series will, will be battling it out at speeds close to 200 miles an hour, just inches away from each other for 500 miles. You're going to want to watch every second of action so you don't miss the big one. If you've never checked out NASCAR, you got to see this race. Grab some beers, order some food, and tune in to the Geico 500 on Sunday, April 23rd at 3 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Mike's not here to do the sound effect. I'll do it now. <laughs> Back to the show. He shot me up with steroids the other day. That'll get age gated. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, what, what kind? What are you doing? Testosterone. Baby. Oh yeah, it's testosterone steroids. Yeah, I call it. it I call it my gear. So I had a whole argument about it the other day because I'm. <laughs> oh, oh, you do? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. My <laughs> Arnold's. Are you kidding me? Okay, okay. All I do is I love the shit. I love it. I love shooting myself up with it. I love everything <laughs> about it. I, my dick's hard nonstop. I jerked off three times the other day. I mean, it is awesome. How much you doing? I don't know. How Just, <laughs> Just running it full do you, syringe. Do I look like a guy who, who fucks with details? Shit. Do, you, do you know what your level is? I don't know. You just do nope. it. It's huh? low. Dude, you, no you're respect. probably at like you're probably at like fifteen hundred right now. No, dude. no, no, no. Right now I might be when I when my levels got tested, I was like at three fifty. Oh, she needed it. I needed it. I was really low. Because it's a big thing here in LA. Like oh, a lot yeah. of people are are using it to try to get back to their youth and keep like yeah, that but I'm getting feel. the OG shit where you stick it in your body. 
The other LA, you got to get a pill stub put in your ass. No, no, I get a needle too. For real? Right in my ass, Who's dude. Guy? I'll introduce you. Okay. He's great. He's got, got other stuff too. CJC growth, NAD, NAD plus. Oh, I got. I'm on the NAC. Oh, oh, is that yeah, the yeah, next? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Don't dude, know. dude, dude. dude. I got my gear. I just started taking it. Your gear. It's, I don't think it's gear. Oh, it's gear. Okay. All right. All right. Does your wife get mad when you jerk off? <laughs> no, she, no, she doesn't give a fuck. She's probably happy because then she doesn't oh, have to do it yeah, she for you. Give a fuck. No, she. I, there was one time we were at Segura's house and he has uh, soft water. You know what that is? I think so. It's where it's slippery. Yeah. And, uh, we were in the shower. Gives you like, like eczema? No, no, I think it's good for you. Cures skin. your eczema? But you could jerk off without just water. Oh, no, come on, I man. I swear to God. It's like KY Jelly. Dude, I swear to God, it's that slippery. Oh, no, whose house is this? Segura, he said to me, have you ever felt soft water? And I, and I had at his house. I didn't remember it was his house. And I was like, dude, I jerked off in a shower because the water was so soft. With my wife in the shower. And he was like, where? And I was like, oh, fuck, it was at your house. <laughs> and he was like, you jerked off at my house? I was like, you have really soft water, man. Yeah. It's fucking soft water is a game changer. I guess it has you to. You feel like you can't get the soap off you, though. That's the worst. I don't yeah. fuck with that. No, I don't like uh, that. I don't like that at so all. So hard water is the problem. Hard water. That's like the end. That's what we have. Right. That's what we all have, yeah. And you definitely have hard water in Florida. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's like probably the hardest. Yeah. I mean, we drank, yeah. We drank out of the hose growing up. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we did that. Well, Ohio's different. Ohio's. Uh, like kissing cousins with Florida, a hundred percent. I think it's Ohio, Florida, and Pennsylvania. I think it's like the the yeah. holy triumvirate of you know. Yeah, I love Ohio. Degeneracy. What? I love Ohio. What part? Uh, all of it. Well, see, Ohio has more comedy clubs in than any state, so uh -huh. we spend more time in Ohio as a comic than any other state you'll ever go to. And adversely, I have huge followings in. Like Columbus, Cleveland. I'm doing the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse uh, in Cleveland. Oh, yeah. Whoa. In a week, yeah. And Whoa. So, and so we have huge followings all in, in uh, Ohio. So I love Ohio. I'm in Ohio all the time. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's an amazing spot to grow up, raise kids, start a family. Yeah. I just had to move on. Yeah. Well, okay. So for you, though, you, 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 were, you were this Florida man, and there's a lot of Florida men out there who, who may still feel like they're, you know, Trapped wrestling the alligator with the shopping cart in the street, doing the bath salts. Yeah. I'm getting struck by lightning. These these type of men. You made it out though. Did you know you wanted to be a comic? Or how how how, how did you escape that um treacherous cyclical uh storm that is Florida? So I was gonna I was probably gonna sell boats or carpets, is what I was gonna do. Uh, uh and when I got out, out of college, my senior year, that that article got written, and like three dudes. My dad being one of them gave me like great advice. They're like, if you want to get out of this state, then this is your opportunity. This one article. I had had a lot of weird offers happen. Uh, like Oprah wanted me to do her show. Uh, it was really crazy. It was before fame. Like fame now is not super accessible, but it's way more accessible than it was then. This sure. is 1997. Yeah. And so... Uh, like I said, Oliver Stone option the rest of my life, and it gave me the confidence to move to New York and do stand up. I'd never, I'd done stand up one time, and uh, but were you like a funny guy? Like that's a, I was a lot of stand ups. Really I feel guy. like their friends are like, "You're hilarious. You should do stand up." And that's the guy that never does stand up. It's like everyone said to me, "You're the funniest guy I've ever met. Uh, you have to do stand up." But you got to remember, my sense of humor was I took a shit on a pizza box to win an election. So like that was my <laughs> sense of humor. Yeah, you can't do that on stage. Yeah, yeah. you're at the box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you been to the box? Uh, of course. Yeah. Of course. Dude. Have you been to the one in what? London? The one in London is... I feel like you did a future dude. presentation. Dude. Were you one of the performers? I, you know, I went in, and I went <laughs> in, and we got so we had some celebrity hook us up, and I was like, hey, you can't get them to grab me, because my energy is play along with it, and I will go hard as fuck. There was a, there was a show, I used to tell the story, there was a thing called Flying Dildos. I don't know if you've ever heard the story. So when we were in college, we went to Amsterdam, and we saw this sign that said, live sex, live sex, flying dildos. And I was like, guys, <laughs> fuck Anne Frank's house. Like drones? <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, like that's dildos? the energy I'm talking about dildo right there. Drones? It's curiosity. You're going, how do they do it? I got to get in there. How do they do it? I want to see how it's done. <laughs> and so we go in, and uh, and we're like, and we're, hey, there's 30 like-minded gentlemen. We're all just sitting around smoking joints, drinking beers, going, how do they do it? Is it like lawn darts? Yeah. Do yeah. we throw them? Yeah. Or is it like those fountains at Epcot where it's girl to girl? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we... Uh, so the show starts, first girl comes out, kind of looks like Danny DeVito, not attractive. Yeah. Give, <laughs> yeah. Just oil rigs herself. We're like, uh. Soft water. <laughs> <laughs> hard water, hard water. <laughs> and so uh, we were like, do you do flying dildos? And she goes, no. And so 
where they give her a golf clap and then two girls come out and they're like kissing. And yeah. We're like, yeah, we just want to troll fist itself. Hey, like, hey, get the hell out yeah, of here. Like, bring a, f- we're like flying dildos. And a dude comes out, we're like, hard pass. <laughs> and now we're so unruly. A woman comes out, thigh high boots, leather thong, medicine bag, biker's cap, <laughs> no top. Goes, gentlemen, I am flying dildos. I'm gonna need a volunteer from the audience. And everyone looks at me like, you're up, asshole. Yeah, yeah. I go up. I'm so caught. This is my energy. And I think it's why I am where I am today because I love, I love the fucking impulse. I love the. You're fucking, a big yes ander. Yeah. Yes and. I've, I, so I, your life is improv. Yeah, I've done coke on accident before, like where I just go, oh shit, I just did coke. I thought that was K. I thought it was K. No, we were what? trying. We were trying to load a bullet, and I go, you're doing it wrong. You gotta. I went, oh shit. And so, <laughs> so, uh, so I'm up on stage, and then she puts a handcuff on me, and I'm like, whoa. And then another handcuff goes on me. I'm like, oh, now I'm starting like, maybe we should ask how this is done. She kicks my feet out from under me, rips my pants off. My dick falls out of my boxers unprepared. I look at my best friend in the front row. I'm like, poke it back in. He's like, no fucking way. <laughs> and then she excalibers a 12-inch dildo into my mouth and proceeds to try to fuck it and going, get your cameras out. This is, I'm up there like, I look like the very last unicorn, dildo out of my face, hands cut behind my back, wind knocked out of me. So when we got to the box, I was like, you cannot let them pull me off stage. Yes, yeah, I'm a yes and motherfucker. <laughs> and next thing you know, I'm letting a dude fuck me in the ass while he shaves. <laughs> he said Excalibur's, Excalibur's a dildo in his mouth. Dude. You wrote, a, you wrote a check your ass couldn't cash. You should have just gone to the Anne Frank house at that point, dude. It happened again as an adult. <laughs> uh, as an adult, it's happened. For the record, it's happened two more times, and my assistant was at one of them. No. <laughs> oh, dude, have you ever gone to the banana room? Tell me about it. Banana room's fucking insane. We had, I, so I told KFC Radio over at Barstool Sports, yeah. I said to them one time, yo, uh, what if you got a phone call? And I said, you have 24 hours. I got tickets waiting for you at the airport. Get 24 hours to live. 24 hours to meet me somewhere. <laughs> okay. <on the> <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Bring me to the banana room, dude. <laughs> Fuck. I said, I said, I'm going to buy you a ticket. I won't tell you where it's for, but I'm going to send you a text and say, you know, it's on. And then you got to get to the airport and then meet me somewhere. Are you in? And they're like, yeah. So I bought them two tickets to Amsterdam. And we went to Amsterdam for three days and just party our ass off. We ended our last night. Everyone's eating mushrooms. Everyone's drunk. We lost one guy. He light like light case OD'd. Uh, and then and and we're in the banana room. They're doing flying dildos again. They're shooting it out of their vaginas wow. across the room. We're going nuts. Kevin Conley from Entourage walks in oh my God. and goes, what's up, motherfuckers? Oh, my God. Like, shut up. He catches the dildo midair, grabs it. It is the craziest. I love that shit. <laughs> Are you sure you saw that, or is there a chance you were just yeah, like, I was I all s- fucked up I on acid and shit? I swear to God. I swear to God. That was one of the funnest nights. You're living like the stories that you, you only hear about because someone told you from someone else, like, like a game of telephone, but it's your life. Yeah, well, I'm also I'm also good at telling a story, so like I I know what parts to take out. Oh uh, yeah, like I can you know I can tell you that that uh, True. that Feidelberg threw up at a casino on an Asian woman. That's not important, but <laughs> that's not. <important. laughs> we, yeah, we don't gotta worry about. No, that. but yeah, I, I I man, I just think like like as things have happened because I guess Razzle Dazzle's done pretty well, and I have the movie coming out, and as you get like celebrities reaching out to you that, that I go, oh, let me get fucking famous. I will fucking run it into the fucking ground. Like I will have like nights where Robert Downey Jr. is like, "Shut the fuck up!" <laughs> like that would be fun as fuck. It's probably gonna happen. I feel like I don't know. I feel like your life, anything could happen. Not, nothing's off limit, limits at this point. I don't. I feel like I. Uh, I feel like I take big chances. Like I like I like to do fun things. Like we were in. Uh, we went to the favelas in uh, oh, yeah. in Rio, Brazil. Yeah. yeah, that's wild. And we took motorcycles up into the favelas. And uh, I got lost and got into the soccer game with these kids. Like, I have fun shit happen to me. I think also because I worked for Travel Channel for so long. Yeah, I want to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, I worked too. for Travel Channel for like eight years. And so I, would, I have crazy stories from that. And then as you get access to things and, and things get bigger, you know, you start going like, oh, let's do that. Let's fucking do that. Yeah. Let's let's go to Bali for two days. Let's go to Hawaii for a weekend. Like that's that's kind of shit. It's I all know. it seems like it's all a result of you saying yes to everything. I you know what really I'm saying? Like you're like no. you're like the the real life yes man, yeah. like Jim Carrey. Well, I, I don't think I don't think no gets you anything. 
I remember when I first came out to Hollywood, this is a small example of that. They had a showcase at, uh, at the Laugh Factory and no one wanted to go second because this guy named Earthquake, who is a monster on stage, was going first and no one wanted to go second. And I thought that's weird energy to have on your showcase night. You should be like, fucking put me in. And I was like, how hard is it going to be to murder after a dude that just murdered? It's, the energy's there. Yeah. Right. And I watched a lot of those dudes. One of the dudes killed himself, but like a lot of those dudes aren't doing it anymore. And I think that negative energy is like, I just, I took every job that's ever offered to me. Anytime anyone wants to do a podcast, even if I'm in Edmonton and it's a dude who does it out of his apartment, I do it. Why oh, not? Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I do everything. And I, I think, you know, like Tommy doesn't. Tommy Segura is not. He's like, I'll do the things I'm comfortable with, but I just love fucking. Well, you can never, I'm, I'm more like you. I, he, he has to be selective for time reasons yeah. and the amount of shit he does, but I'm, I'm very much like you. And that's one of the reasons why I did smoke crack um, <laughs> is because I, I say yes to pretty much everything, but I found that you can't ever predict where saying yes can lead to. You Dude. can always predict what saying no can lead to. It can lead you back to whatever you're already doing or yeah. something else safe or whatever. But when you say yes to things, you meet new people, you try new things, you experience new things, and you find comfort in those things that could then lead you to doing other things. And it's saying yes is the easiest way to continue to climb the ladder. Yeah. When you say no, it's usually a result of like fear or uncomfortability or anxiety or whatever. And, you, and in life, you have to get over those things to have any kind of real success. And it seems like you've done that at every junction. Yeah, I made some mistakes. I made some like, obviously. Well, but saying yes to everything. It's saying yes to, to everything happen. bound to like, I just love the, I don't know, I like the tickle of it. You know, it's like, uh, I have a, this video that I did on Barstool about uh, never quitting drinking. And it was- I, I saw that. And I was like, I just, I mean, by the way, I, I, I was tired. I didn't want to do that interview, like I, but I did it. Yep. And then that, vi that, that video goes viral, but that energy is what I like. I love the- I love the tickle of it. You know, yeah. when someone's like, when you, when someone says you, you want to do something and you shouldn't do it, and you're like, yeah, let's fucking do it. I'm, I'm a huge believer in that too. I mean, I, I, I'm a little maybe more selective now because I'm just running out, out of energy, to be honest. I got to be like, really. You, I feel like you have, you, I feel like you guys, I love your energy. I actually sometimes like playfully quit, think about quitting drinking because I see how much energy you guys have. And I go, I would <laughs> love to be back there. Well, you think it's because we're sober? You guys don't drink, do you? Come on. Depends on when you ask. I, I mean, I'll do years, so I don't do any narcotics, no drugs. Really? But it depends when you ask. 2020, fully sober. You should do a shot right now. Well, actually, I'm sober right now, would. so. Oh, then would. I am too. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about that too because <laughs> <laughs> when we, we don't do a 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. podcast very oh, often. Oh, for real? We, I, I'm not, I got to wake up and like get into the zone a little bit. You walked in here, it was like ba you did bath salts this morning. Oh, I, I had a fucking workout this morning. Oh, you already worked out? I trained at 8 in the morning. I got up at. I was lucid dreaming, so I was having like a cool, fun morning. Cool, okay. cool. Those are fun. Those, Those are, are fun when you fucking. when you watch and you're in your dream like it's real and you're so entertained. It's a movie. Yeah. What was it about? I had one of those. Uh, wait, what was yours about? This is my problem. I can't really recall like five seconds after I wake up. Oh, oh, I am very adamant about remembering my dreams. Really? Do yeah. You write, you write I, well, I used to. What I used to do is speak them into my phone. And then oh. I, and, and I tell my dream immediately, everything I remember, try to remember everything. That's smart. Because you can untangle all your dreams. Once you get one dream, you're like, oh, shit, I had a dream about Bradley Cooper last night. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, fuck, I had a dream about Star Wars. God damn it. Like, but my dream last night, there was, I always have, I have a lot of stuff going on in my life. I'm organizing crocodiles or alligators. And so for whatever reason, I'm just making sure. Because you're from Florida. I think so. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I had a terrible fear of alligators. You're organizing them? Uh, organizing them. Like I'm in a place where they're, <laughs> where they're coming at me and I'm like, no, 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 no. Hold on. You got to go over there. And I'm pushing <laughs> is them. There, is there, what's, the, what's the justification for the organ? Is it height? Is it le like yeah. length of tail? No. no. Like and and it's, I'm there always ends with one of our dogs. So that's a big fear of Florida is that your dog get eaten by an alligator. For sure. happened to my cousin's. For real? In Florida, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's no, alligator. not his cousin's dog. His cousins, like two of his cousins, were <laughs> eaten by, by alligators. Yes, <laughs> his cousins <laughs> were eaten. I want to meet these two guys. <laughs> no, they're dead, yeah, dude. Yeah, they're fucking toast. Dismembered. <laughs> dismembered now. <laughs> yeah. No, so and then at the end of the dream, um, our dog Mona fell in the water, and I pulled Mona out, and she was saying, "No, no," and I went, "Hey, you can talk." <laughs> <laughs> and then I went, "Wait." This is a dream because I knew that yeah, she was. Yeah. I go, this is a dream. When it gets too ridiculous. And yeah. then, and that's when I go, all right, hold it, yeah. breathe, relax. Yeah. You're in control. You're dreaming. Let's have some fun. And it's so fucking crazy that 
in this dream, I said, where do I want to go? I said, I want to go find my wife. In a dream? That's I'm what you're going to look for your wife. Know. You already got her in real I life, 24-7. I could have fucking gotten Anybody. Adriana Chechik. <laughs> 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 fucking had to eat my ass. My fucking yeah, but that could... a 52-year-old menopausal chick. <laughs> 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 Doesn't want to hang out with me in real life. <laughs> You find her in your dreams, God. she's like, get away from me. My, my problem with dreaming is, um, you're not going to like this. I don't, I'm not convinced they actually mean, like, anything at all. W oh. and, and so, like, uh, minus your dream just now, because it was entertaining. Man, when people tell me about their dreams, I just don't give a fuck. Dude, for it. I have the best. I had a dream one time uh, that Elvis and I were in an elevator. Old school Elvis, big fat Elvis. Yeah. And he's like, hey, baby, you want a party? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he handed me a pill, and I popped it. He popped it, and then all of a sudden he goes flipper on me, just, and I'm like, oh crap, I grab him, I can carry him because it's a dream. I go to the front counter at the hotel, I say, what room is he in? They tell me 111, is my power number, okay. so I take him down to 111, I prop him up on the door, grab his key, open the door, and as the door opens, I see five dudes butt fucking, yeah. throwing up in Burger King cups. Dan Cook. Uh, just, uh, 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 uh. and I'm like, I shut the door, I go, Elvis, what the fuck's going on in your room? And he wakes up and he goes, it's your dream, baby. Oh, shit. I woke up immediately, fucking looked at my wife. I was like, you're never going to believe. I tell her the dream. She's Her concern is the gay shit. I go, uh-uh, fuck the gay shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's been here for years. <laughs> you think that's the first gay dream I've had? <laughs> oh, no, I'm worried about the product placement. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> how upset Burger King would be if they're like, have it our way. <laughs> I was like, what did they do? Like, I was trying to find out what did Burger King do yeah. to me that day to get in the dream. As a marketer, that's what I'm interested in as well. Yeah. Can I tell you? Can I, I soft pitch you? Yeah. Can, let, I would love to do a dream podcast where we get like a, we get like a, like a, like Calm. You ever listen to the Calm app? Yeah, yeah of course. Get that yeah. chick to just relax you. Take you in. Breathe for the next breathe 30 seconds. Breathe for the next 30 seconds. And then she does her magic and you fall asleep. And that's where we step link in. up. That's and where we're we like, link up. We're like, hey, we're in. Right. All right. Let's load up. We're fighting dragons tonight. Wow. We're in a big chamber. Let's let's see. And we describe the room. But you but you're in someone's head while they sleep. Because I listen to a lot of history podcasts, and I will have history podcasts where I'm in the Congo or like because it seeps. Have into you, you done Have you done World War Two? Have you done any World War Two? Not the best. I wouldn't recommend it. A, it's yeah. It's nasty. Do you listen to the dictators? The Dictators is the one I listen to, and they've got like 15 parts on Hitler. Yeah, no, those ones you don't want to lose. You'll dream, start though. on Robert Mugumbe, and then it'll go into Hitler, and then you just have Holocaust dreams for the rest nah, of your nah, night. Nah. You're like, motherfucker. <laughs> Do you know Hitler? <laughs> I mean, I, like, I can talk to you about You can't learn too many facts about Hitler because you sound like a lunatic. Yeah. Someone's like talking like, yeah, you know, the environment, the bees. You're like, Hitler's dad was a beekeeper. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you have his cup. I do. I have his teacup. You have Hitler's teacup. Uh, yeah. Your friend gave it to you, Tom? It's my, yeah, my best friend. What a, what a great gift. <laughs> Help me figure out a gift for him. His birthday's in April. I really want to fuck him up. Wait, what is the deal with his teacup? He, I'm a history buff, so like, and I'm a big fan of Winston Churchill. The, the legend. Yeah, You've been to the, done the war rooms, obviously? Legend. In London? Did you, legend. Go, to, did you no, go to the war rooms? No, every year I celebrate his, his death yeah. by, by living like he did for a day. That's awesome. So I wake up full... Fucking spread, full English breakfast in bed, uh, soft scotch, booze, yep, booze, yep. cigar, yep. paper, yep. Uh, hold meetings for about three hours. Everyone comes in the room. With, Lunch. With who? With who? Anyone? I, this Your year? Kids? This? No. Uh, well, yeah. One year it was with my kids. Yeah. <laughs> one, the first year was with my kids. My wife did it. This year we were in uh, in Amsterdam, and so my whole team came in. My trainer, my 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 assistant. Everyone came in, and I took meetings in bed. Then you take a bath, champagne for lunch, cognac at night, another cigar. You drink all through the day. It's awesome. He was wild. Dude, he was the wild. He dude. lived to like 92. Legend, dude. What? That's he why all those rules and shit, it's hard. Yeah. Every, yeah. every fucking day. You yeah. have to do the war rooms in London. Really? It is the number one attraction, like history, especially World War II. All of the rooms that he lived in during the war or that he went to, to to strategize against the Nazis are still intact. Dude, he's a bad motherfucker. The baddest. I won an award. Uh, I won an award. Uh, for, I don't know what it was for, but it was uh, it was the Damn the Torpedoes Award. For I, I created touring during the pandemic at drive-in movie theaters, and I got this award, but it's it's his phrase. 
And it was like during World War II, they're like, what do we do? They've got U-boats out there. They got submarines. He's like, damn, the torpedoes. <laughs> Full steam ahead. <laughs> that motherfucker was badass. Yeah, he's a real one. Dude. But so I'm a big Winston Churchill fan. And so I celebrate Winston Churchill's the death, his death, January 24th or whatever year. So you celebrate his death. You know what? You wouldn't rather just do like a birthday. I don't know. Because right. don't you think that's more January is more accessible for me? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. The first day I found, figured out to do it, it was December. So I was like, "Oh, cool, it's next month." <laughs> I'm gonna wait till April. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Just made I'm more not sense. his sister. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, Tom and I used to do this thing where we bought each other more expensive gifts every year. So the first year he bought me an electric bike. And then we said for rest, because it was really, it was a great bike. I love that bike still. Um, and then I said, you know me better than my wife. Well, let's just increase the price of our gifts every year. So the next year I bought him a jet ski. And then the next year he bought me a private jet from, I was, we were testing the movie. So it was from like Minneapolis to Austin, to LA, to Dallas, a to Austin. Oh my God. A private jet tour? Uh, yeah. Like he took me on like three private jets and it was a G6. So oh, like, I mean, that's, wait, that's 100, yeah, that's 100 say, plus thousand like really dollars. So, yeah, so I bought him a race car for our last one. Whoa. I bought him a race oh, car. Oh, so y'all are rich. That's, that's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you guys are too. We're all rich, okay? So, I wouldn't do that for my friends. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, it's funny when you get money later in life, it just doesn't matter. He much. actually gave me a better present than all of yours on what, my birthday. Really? A porn star. Who? Lana fucking Rhodes. Yeah, he's oh. the one that introduced me. That's why I dated her. Because he. Oh, shut the fuck up. Yeah, because he, on my birthday. I thought it was going to be some stupid gift. I turned around. It was fucking numero uno. Wow. Number one public enemy. Wow. Yep. Just standing there. Not, now me. he's raising her kid. That's not his. I have, I'm not the dad. I'm the dad that stepped up. For real? No, yeah. I'm not really. But I do shoot, I do, I do <laughs> he, shoot he, videos. He does exploit the kid for I content. I do use him for content. <laughs> Bro, that kid's awesome, dude. Oh, is he cool? Yeah, he's a cool kid. He's oh, a cool, cool little. He's got a crazy jump shot. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Wait, so anyways, back to the Nazis. <laughs> back to the Nazis, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. That's exactly Okay, so anyway, So I got him a race yeah, car, yeah. and then we started getting anxiety about our birthday gifts this year because it was like we're, we're, in, we're in six figures, and my wife was pissed. Yeah. And so uh, he said, can we just try Let's just make them fun. And I was like, okay, like, like meaningful and fun. Right. So I was like, okay. So then he gave me the teacup, and he goes, I know you're history buff. And I'm like, oh, my God. He got me Winston Ch Churchill's teacup. Yeah. Oh, it was Churchill's teacup. No, no, no. it's the Fuhrer's, dude. And I have it, and, I'm, and, he's, like, and he's like, that cup in your hand is 99% certainty that the Fuhrer himself drank from it. <laughs> I'm like, shit. what the fuck? And so he changed the whole birthday giving thing. So now we got to fuck with each other for our birthdays. So his birthday's coming up in April. I got to get him something. Get him something good. Very similar to his situation. Him and his brother, well, technically just his brother, do something similar. Really? No. Fate gave him a Lamborghini. Yeah, I don't know what Mike's talking about. <laughs> he hates it. He's, he's weird. He's weird. <laughs> he wait, wait, wait. It. I just hate my, he I hate my birthday. I don't, really do, I don't really like gifts. I don't want people to gift. Just leave serious? me alone. Leave me alone. Oh, I love my birthday. Hate it so much. I don't think, pe I don't, I, I, I like kind of firmly believe that I'm not sure if people should be awarded for a decision they had no part in. Like, yeah. I didn't ask to be here. I'm, I'm, that, thank, I'm that, thankful that, now. I, as a celebration of life, I get it. And, and for me, it's it's like a milestone. But my problem is my birthday's on April 1st, so everyone pranks me. Hey, my Rolling Stone article came out April 1st. Really? Yeah. And I have, like, one week of my year. It's your birthday week. It has been a huge week for me every fucking year. My movie started production. I got written up in Rolling Stone magazine. I went to Russia... Uh, I started from my freshman year oh, of, cool. of college. All that happened in that. What, I love one those week. momentum weeks. I love. Like, yeah, sometimes you have those those really good weeks. That would be cool. For that, me, it's the opposite. That week always sucks. Really? It always. Remember sucks. our we got in a huge fight that week. Too. Yeah, my birthday um, consistently has been the worst day of the year every year for the past like five years. But I do think I do think this year is the the the, the pivot. Oh yeah, how old are you? I'm gonna be 28. And I, I I get to perform at WrestleMania on my birthday, dude. Can I tell you, so, you're a really good wrestler. Thanks, man. Like thanks. and uh, like, I'm, I've been a fan of wrestling. I think just because I'm from Florida. But when I first saw you wrestling, I was like, God damn it, man! This guy's like actually like really talented. Thanks. and fearless. That's true. That I'll 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 stand by. Yeah, I don't I don't just don't give a fuck. I'll just do I'll send it. 
stuff. You need yeah. that energy. You know, especially, especially when, when cameras are on. I remember I was filming with Jake one time and I was about to do, I was pitching this stunt to him where we would both go on a tandem bike and go off a jump. If you can picture that, and it, a high jump, like three, four feet, like stupid as shit. Like you have yeah. no balance on a tandem bike. There's a person on the back, right? And Jake looks at me and he goes, he goes, Logan, like, uh, we're not, we're not crash dummies anymore, <laughs> man. We're not like 12. We don't got to do, we don't got to do this for views. And I just remember like this really instinctual feeling looking at him and being like, I am a crash dummy. Mm -hmm. I feel like that. I, I, well, I it, love stunts. So you got to have, you got to have that exact energy to do that. So we were in Zanzibar and we were doing this. These kids were jumping off uh, the, the side of a, uh, of like a ledge into what looked to be like two feet of water uh, and it was like a 30 foot drop uh, and they were doing the thing you ever seen the thing where you punch it with your hands yeah your at the end yeah that's how you survive and so i was like <laughs> seriously and so i was we had it's a muslim country but we had gotten some booze over by freddie mercury's house and i and okay. i was like and it's I twist and i had a little bit of i had a little bit of energy i was like i bet i could fucking do this i bet i could fucking do this i bet i, could, I was like fuck it i can do this and i grabbed one of the kids i go you think i can do this and the kids looks at me he's like oh, oh yeah <laughs> i would love to see this let me get in the water i want to see it up close and at the very last second someone stopped me they go don't do it and i went really and that was the end of me doing fearless stuff. I did all my own stunts in the movie that we did. Yeah. Because I was like, fuck it, I can do it. Dude, I can't, I can't throw a punch to save. When I first I had to start, we had to do fight <laughs> scenes. I didn't, I didn't realize how hard it is to throw. I had to take extensive fight training just to look natural throwing a punch. Here I am talking shit to dudes throwing trash <laughs> out their window. I can't throw a punch. I'm so bad. I'm not even fucking around. In my movie, during the fight scenes, I make the noises. They had to edit out me going, gush, gush, cha, cha. Like, I swear to God. Wait, I thought, I thought you were secretly athletic. I am secretly athletic, but I cannot throw a fucking punch. Have you ever fought? Yeah, I've been in fights. But, usually but God forbid up. you ever see those things back, dude. Like, oh, imagine watching, not look good. <laughs> imagine not look good. watching yourself. Doosh, dude. Doosh. <laughs> when we did, I was like, we did a thing where I had to fall down a, a mountain. And I was like, yeah, I can do it. Don't worry, I got it. And, uh. That's when I first hurt my elbow. And then I had a fight scene where I had to tackle a guy and go down a flight of stairs. Apparently going down a flight of stairs is the most dangerous thing you can ever do. Yeah. Sidebar, when I was written up in Rolling Stone magazine, Johnny Knoxville came down and partied with me in 1997, before Jack Whoa. Had, we got high as fuck, ate pills, watched Camp Kill Yourself, dressed as women's, and threw ourselves downstairs. Sidebar. Sidebar. That's amazing. I know, crazy, right? I've, I got some really that crazy. That is amazing. Yeah, Johnny. Yeah, I've, that was, that was pre-Johnny Knoxville jackass. He sat in his kitchen, in my kitchen in college, and pitched me jackass. No fucking way. And I was like, Why was, did you not do that? Why, I wish yeah, I, feel I had. Like, I feel like you'd be a great part of the jackass. Group. I would have been great. I love that, dude. I love that show. Those Them boys are uh, physically kind of altered now forever because of that stuff. I think especially, especially Johnny, yeah. I, I think. I think he, yeah, I think I think that took their toll on him. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's maybe it's good that you didn't do it. I had a show called it, Hurt Bird that was like it, where I got mauled by a bull, and once I got mauled by a bull, I was like, I'm done. Yo, you, oh, you went face to face with the bull. You, Six did you, seconds. Did you have the? Um, do you make it a vine? No, no, no. I had to dress. I had to dress in fucking clown makeup. So I was already freaking out. I'm melting down. I, I couldn't do full makeup. I was like, I can't. You can put like a thing on me, but I can't go. Yeah. And and. uh I had to wear someone else's clothes. So many of these things are like triggers for me. Like I had to wear someone else's clothes. I don't like wearing other people's clothes. Well, I had to who wear other does? Uh, you yeah. think there's anybody out there who's just a huge fan no, of No, there's people that just doesn't bother. They go, oh yeah, give me a pair of shoes. I'll put those on. Well, I'll no, there are those. some people who do yeah. like to do it. And so they let the bull out. Bull circles the ring. This fast. Let the bull out. Bull circles the ring. Breaks my ribs. Breaks my foot. And oh. goes back into the thing. And, and they're like... This is back when television was 22 minutes. And they're like, yo, you got to do it again. Ugh. We don't have enough content. And you, I mean, you hear me. It breaks my ribs and you go, that noise. <laughs> and then I go, he breaks my foot. And you can see me try to get away and I can't use my foot. Like, it just doesn't work. You can find it online. It's out there. But, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I did that show. And then I was like, as soon as I got my bubble, because I was a dominatrix gimp, I swam with great white sharks out of the cage. Okay, okay. What haven't you done? Because <laughs> I feel like you've probably done most most things. Crack. crack. Uh, crack. I haven't Besides done crack. crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done uh, heroin, pharmaceutical heroin. Uh, like oxycodone? Yeah, because I fell off a waterfall in uh, North Carolina on my back. I thought I broke my back. Mm. Spinal. So, yeah, and so they're like, yo, we got to x-ray you in order to x-ray you. We got to move you around in order to move like you around. Like roll you around. Like yeah. need you almost, like dough. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> they're like, they're like, it's gonna hurt. So we're gonna give you the lotted. Oh, like, that shit's that's the craziest. I've been on every fucking opiate, <laughs> and Dilaudid is crazy, it's, bro. D Johnny Knoxville, when I first met him, yeah. the first words out of his mouth are, do you know how to get Dilaudid? That shit's crazy. <laughs> I'm in college. Whoa. I'm like, I don't even know how to get pills. <laughs> Whoa. I can get you cheap weed. That's like if you're fucked up. If you're fucked up, they give you that, dude. Yeah. And so she gave it to me, and I was like, I'm going to write a poem. Because it's Do terrible. you have the poem? Uh, no, but I can tell you what it was. It was, oh, fuck. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh, like my, a haiku. My face is hot. <laughs> like a haiku. You a haiku. My face oh, is fuck, hot. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! <laughs> my face is hot. Shit! My pants. Oh my god! This is awesome. <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> How many push-ups can you do? Fifty. Did you do chest today? I did chest today. Yeah. Damn. Why you want to see me do fifty? I, I was going to challenge you to a push-up contest. I, not, oh, you can smoke me. Not challenge. I, I you think, can smoke I think, me. I think we should all just rock. I could. I could rock. I, I can. I can definitely bang. I mean, we did do chest. I did a uh, hundred push-ups today, and we did chest. Oh, really? Oh, you probably fried, huh? We could. We could do some. I, I, could, I'm, I, I don't would, feel. I'm, I'm all fucked up on Benadryl right now. We did. We were at the Super Bowl. We did me, Shane Gillis, Mark Norman did these shows during the Super Bowl. We're doing them again in Vegas this year. All the comics, everyone comes through and parties. All the football players. And we're backstage, and I'm like, I could do 50 push-ups. And Gabe Davis is like, bullshit. That's a lot. You can really do 50? Yeah, I can do In one well, set well, or five sets of 10? No, I, oh, I, can do I can do as many as I want. I was doing a, a 200 a day at a certain point. But we did, for this sober October, me, Rogan, Ari, and Tom did 100 push-ups a day. So once you, get, once you start doing 100 push-ups a day, and I've been keeping up with it, you can easily, I mean, like 20 is nothing. 40, 40 is where you start feeling it. Yeah. 42. Yeah. But you, I can I would imagine I can push through to 42 is like normally if I, if I, because we were doing uh, five burpees, five squats, and five push ups and adding five every day. Okay. So by the end, you're at like 150. And of course, you miss a day, you're fucked. And so we were doing that. And uh, <laughs> I was getting to the place where I was just like, I want to get through push ups. So I could get 40, but I have to take a break. And then I'd have to go 20s, 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 yeah. 20s. Did you see your ability to do push-ups go up or down after you got uh, Hitler's little cup? Uh, leveled out. Just the same? Yeah. It didn't change same. at no, all? Change. Was it from... The, <laughs> I'm still very hung up on it mentally. I don't think we gave that cup enough credit. <laughs> Is it from... Was it from the eagle's nest? No, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> there's, been, there's, been a, there's been some... There's been some a conspiracy online with some of uh, Tom's... I, I say Tom's fans who are questioning the authenticity of it. Yeah. So I see that happen sometimes, even with your stuff. People are wondering if you actually were KGB. Because you were, I, are you still <laughs> with the Red Army, bro? Because I saw that whole story, obviously, the yeah. machine story. Yeah. I've seen it, and I understand it and stuff. But, you know, obviously, Russia being our sworn enemy, yeah. I get curious sometimes, like, is, has this man turned? And I thought, and I thought recently that it's, it's either you which is my first choice. I, I think you are a spy. Or it's, oh. or it's Hasbala, the little Hasbala. Because you know how they think that pigeons are like the American CIA spies? Like yeah. they think, like, have you ever seen a baby pigeon? The birds aren't real. Birds aren't real. Yeah. I think Hasbala is a potentially KGB oh. or a bird, one or the other. <laughs> He's sneaky, man. You know he can't. 100%. He can't. He can't have sex with chicks? No, he can't even take that. pictures with chicks. Yes, yeah. what the fuck? Because he's a fucking spy, bro. That's why. No, no, no. no. I no, think it's because he's Muslim. A Muslim spy from Russia. Oh. And, I'm, and listen to this, dude. Do you, have you ever seen who he rolls with besides the Nelk boys? You'd think it's just <laughs> normal fucking people, you know, everyday people. Armed KGB. Are you serious? I saw him at the slap contest. I want to continue to really dive into Russia here yeah, for a second. please. I saw him at the slap contest in Vegas. Oh, Hezbollah would be great promos for the movie. Fucking write that down. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Write it down. Oh, yeah. Write it down. Oh, yeah. She already typing it. She's yeah. contacting KGB right now. Call kick, the Kremlin I'll put right him on a fucking now. on a stoop and let him kick me in the dick. He would oh, he would that. love that. Oh, but yeah. Have I think, you met I him? I think he runs around and punches people in the face. That's he punches thing. pretty hard. Like I mean, for like for like a joke thing. I saw him hit someone. Mike Tyson. Yeah. He was beating the fuck out of Mike Tyson. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, hey, bro. Have you met him? Have you met him? No, I haven't met him. Here's the thing that I really, and I don't mean this in a, in a sick way. We're friends with dwarves, and I know that's going to sound like a ridiculous statement, but we do. We befriended. <laughs> no, there are people seven, No, but just the idea of just having them in your crew. Like, yeah. we have really tight dwarf relationships. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't mean it in any funny way. I'm just 
Well, well, let me finish the statement. Don't fucking cancel me until I finish my statement. Yeah, right. So I understand the height, the natural height of that subset of of our species. Yes. When I met Hasbulla, I had made the assumption that he was going to be about dwarf height. This dude was the size of a prime bottle. I'm not fucking kidding, no. dude. Wait, how tall is six he? To, up he's here, like, he's six like to eight inches, something. bro. Total. Oh, he's like waist high. <laughs> All right. No, I met no, him. No, I don't no. know if either of y'all met him. I he's, personally he's, met him, bro. He's about three feet. He's not six to eight inches. He's three feet. He's three. Three feet is pretty big. No, nah, he's not. He's, no, not, he's no. like two six. He looks dude. like. He looks like. Is he up to your thigh? Yes, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Thigh height. How high is that? Would it's you say? not three feet. No, it's not. No, it's not three feet, bro. Because when I saw him, he was sitting on a couch like this. And I was behind them, and everybody's like, yo, Hasbro is in that chair. But to me, it was just a chair. Like, there was, because there was no head over the top of it. Oh, you didn't? So it was just to me, I just thought it was just an empty chair. But if yeah. you went around the other side, there he was <laughs> yeah. sitting there looking, watching people smack the shit out of each other because he loves violence. Shit. I wonder how often he gets in the back of a taxi and they just forget he's in there all the time. And he's just driving around all the fucking time, just looking up. So the next patron calls, yeah. Hey, did someone forget their Hasbro <laughs> in the back of his taxi? He's still back. In I there, met bro. Mini Me. Yes, that's see, I me feel too. like that's yeah. similar. Mini me, I met was great. Me. No, he was a dick. Yeah, he, he was, was a dick. <laughs> he was a dick to me. Well, he was probably super famous. At no, the time. no, yeah, he was very famous. And he was, I asked him a question. He said, they said in his in the profile interview, they said he does his own stunts. And I went, whoa, that's crazy. You do your own stunts? And he goes, how fucking stupid are you? Oh my. And I was God. like, I mean, this is an interview on television. Yeah. And I go, I'm sorry. And he goes, who else are they going to get to do my stunts? A baby? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh shit. Yeah, I guess how. Yeah, you have to do your own. No, stuff. Tom yeah, Cruise does some yeah. asshole. <laughs> what do you fucking think, girl? Obviously, I didn't even realize. Yeah. And I was like, sorry. And then a dog got loose, and he fucking panicked. Oh, oh, oh. There was yeah. a dog on set, and there was a bulldog, and it's like it's like a fucking lion yeah, to him. Fuck it's like that. cocaine bear. Yeah. So. <laughs> you hear he's he's officiating a wedding? Not many me's dead. No, but. not many me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I want to go to that way. But, uh, but, but There's equally, just a box up front. And everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little shoe box. <laughs> but oh, equally R. weird. R.I.P. Vern. Vern Troyer. R.I.P. Vern. R.I.P. Vern. But equally weird, bro. <laughs> the cocaine bear. Dead, the weird. dead coat. This is this is like peak 2023 shit. Florida man bath salts. What? The dead taxidermied cocaine bear is officiating a wedding, bro. The actual bear. The actual carcass, dude. Oh, that's Fuck. cool. They fucking hired the dead bear, whose stock is obviously way up it's now, since he's in the movies, yeah. to officiate their wedding. That's cool. Which is fucking crazy, dude, if you think about it. That is crazy. I've officiated a couple weddings. So is he. Have you? Uh, one, yeah. It was, it was cool. It was yeah, cool. it was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, do you collect dinosaur bones? <laughs> 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 I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> Just not sure. Just not I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, actually, you said your history, buff. Oh no, I don't collect dinosaur bones. I don't even know if they're real. That's what I want to ask. That's I what I want to ask. I don't think they're. I don't think they're real. No, come on, bro. I don't think they're real. Come on, don't say that to me. I didn't know there was stuff before Jesus. I was. We were doing a tour, and I was saying to my daughters. They were talking about Julius Caesar. I go, ah, is, he's a real person? I thought he was a play by Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. And the lady goes, yeah, he's, he's based off the fucking, that's the movie's ba the yeah. play's based off him. I'm like, oh, shut His up. name's Julius Caesar. Well, and I go, like, oh, shut up. And then my daughter, Isla, goes, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I want to hear dad, I want to hear dad, tell me how you think history went. She knows you're ridiculous. And I, and I, I we're, <laughs> we're in front of a, a history scholar who's giving us a tour of Italy. I go, well, I thought it went dinosaurs. Then Jesus, <laughs> then like JFK and Shakespeare, and I was like, "Oh, wow. Shakespeare after Shakespeare yeah, after, after Jesus after, yeah, yeah, skipped yeah, yeah. in real range." Yeah. So, but, wait, you don't think you really don't think those dinosaurs? No, hold on. Dinosaurs? Okay, for real, I don't. So they don't find when they dig up a dinosaur, they don't find a whole dinosaur just sitting there going like this. They find like the finger, right? And then they go, "Okay, we'll just build the rest of it." So the rest of it's not no, real not bones. always, not always. No, but I think almost want to say. 98%. Yeah. They just find like a, an ankle. And then 3D print. The and then, rest yeah, 3D yeah. print the rest of it. That's and then no. You think they find a. No, because he has a head. I, I have a triceratops. But, but skull. here's the thing. What, is it a, hang on. Is a, no, there's absolutely no way it's a real triceratops. It's not. 66% real. Yeah. See? <laughs> see? Do you see what he. They that's, found one that's, tooth. What do you mean? It's two they built They, they built the tooth and then they built it out. 3D no, no. Okay, but then what's the theory? Where's the rest of the dinosaur? You don't believe it could have just disintegrated? No, it disintegrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And but the head's there. 
So what's the thesis? You're saying you're saying he doesn't think the rest of the dinosaur ever existed. They like just, the no, dinosaurs no, no, were just heads. my dinosaur was a two thirds dinosaur. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it was just living. a head. It was just, a max head They rolled. No, no, <laughs> they rolled around. When they find a dinosaur bone, if someone know anything? Is anyone smart in this room? That, I don't like, think so. Where they find like a pink? They, it's like if they if I found you, right? Yeah. This is how. Okay, right. I was like, uh, two hundred years from now, I go. I just discovered Logan Paul. And they're like, no way. I go, yep. It's his one of his shoes. And then we and then I built out a Logan Paul and you were in that shoe. And then everyone's like, that's what he looked like. <laughs> that's definitely what his shoe looked like. But then that's we're pretty sure. But then you can look like anything. We can make you look like Hezbollah. And everyone's like, shut up, he was tiny. <laughs> Three feet tall. Oh no, 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 because he officiated weddings. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many, there's so much research. How much did you pay for a dinosaur head? <laughs> oh. Well, I collect dinosaur Tom bones. Tom Segura would never. <laughs> Tom Segura would you never. You collect dinosaur bones? <laughs> well, I guess now. It's a skull. Dude, it's a triceratops skull as big as you. It's awesome. For real? It's awesome. Where do you keep it's, it? It's my prized possession. Where do you it's keep it? In, in my home. Really? Yeah, it's like a 1,000 pounds. It's big, man. Triceratops are great. Great animal. They call them the T-Rex killer. They had a joint. Wait, I thought the, the triceratops was a T-Rex. All right, man. You don't collect dinosaurs. Dude, Bert. I don't collect dinosaurs. <laughs> no oh, shit. That's, that's, I don't know shit about dinosaurs. Nah. Okay, but conspiracies in general. I don't, like, I don't follow. I, I don't get what, it. Not Illuminati? Mm -mm. Like, you don't think he's ascended to a certain level of fame that he probably gets contacted by, like, John Legend and shit Ooh. like that? Ooh. It's not to think about. You don't think okay. he's ever rubbed placenta blood on his face before? I've seen someone do it. He's in the he's in the circle. I've, I've had a lot of. I've been with Rogan, and he's injected me with a lot of stuff. No, they were just. They were just <laughs> the vegans. Was the no, vegans. that's yeah, that's fucking. Oh, that's, the vegans. vegans. No, the vegans are above Illuminati. <laughs> okay. The vegans. The you ever met a vegan before? I was vegan for like forty five minutes one day. Oh, actually? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tried. I tried. I really tried, and then I ate pasta, and I didn't know there was egg and pasta. Yeah, bro, they do some weird shit. Yeah, bro. vegans. Yeah, like oh, I don't trust vegans. Ritual. No, how could you? No, I don't. How could you? You know, Hitler was a vegan. That makes was sense. he really? Yeah, yeah. He, he invented meth as well. Yeah, he did. He didn't invent it. He just loved it. He loved meth. He had like a party doctor. You, this is a big topic, and I want to dive into it. And we we haven't spent much time diving today, except for that cliff in Zanzibar that you didn't jump off of. <laughs> you are, and it's gonna be crazy to say it because it doesn't seem like you are, but you're fucking scared of dying, bro. Oh, I'm terrified. You, and I want to talk about this because I I I have sometimes have this uncomfortable feeling about death, dude. Like like. Dude, what the fuck happens, bro? Where do okay? Do are you going to the clouds? Are you going? Are you gonna be with the dinosaurs in a recreated simulation? Is your fucking great grandfather there and he was a Nazi? Like, yeah. what is gonna happen when you fucking die? Bro? I uh, I think about that every single morning when I wake up. Every single morning. first thought in your mind. My first thought was, so you're telling me one day it just goes black? Yeah. Like Louis C.K. says, it goes black and it you become nothing. Just like you were nothing before, you're nothing again. I had panic today thinking uh, m not only, so my great, gr my grandfather was in World War II on this side. He stormed the beaches in Normandy. Oh, awesome. and, I, and I was listening to a podcast about Dunhill this yeah, morning. Yeah. And I was like, and I was like, wow, my grandfather at that time was in Paris Island, probably getting ready to come over. And I went, and wait, I was just a sperm inside a sperm right at that point like yeah. i wasn't even like a sperm sperm yeah and i have no and i'm cool with being not there then but the idea that i would not be here then in the future panics me to no end i don't you strike me as someone who does not care about death it depends if i'm hungover mm -hmm. okay because then Cause... you're kind of like begging for it yeah oh you know <laughs> It's so funny. I'm that. the exact opposite. If I'm not hungover, I don't think about death. And if I'm hungover, I think about death. If I'm hungover, take me out of my misery. Yeah. I, I swear to God. Well, some, and you have hang, <laughs> anxiety. Some days anxiety? I just I get, like, oh. uh, yeah, yeah. Searing. 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 Like, like, yeah, especially if I eat an edible too. I'm like fucking. Oh, yeah, yeah that can send you. Oh. Can, you, do, you do an edible on the plane? We do. No, and I don't on planes. We do them on the bus. I'll do it like we'll party oh. and then I'll take one right before I go to bed. But I have a hard time. Like rebounding, yeah, getting out the next morning. I'm yeah. just like this, like, yeah, Whoa. edibles give <clears throat> nasty, like dreary, almost hangovers. Yeah, and the anxiety I get from them is not, it's not enjoyable. So I don't, like, I, I don't well, do why, it. Why, why are you doing? Uh, 
Yeah. Do you ever, <laughs> you, ever, you ever put a hot sauce on something and go, fuck, I'm going to regret this later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, the all the time. That's all. That's <laughs> drugs. That's yeah. called drugs yeah. and drinking. Yeah. yeah. Every day you wake up, never again. Yeah. And then like two hours later. I said that this morning. I said, you know what? I have a 4 a.m. pickup for my flight tomorrow. I'm not going to drink tonight. I'm going to work out. I'm going to do this podcast. We're going to have fun. And I'm going to fucking hang out with my family. And then I found out we have a party to go I'm to. I'm going today. to it. Are you going to it? Yeah. Yeah. What are you wearing? At the edition. I'm yeah. probably going to wear these slippers. Okay. Well, it's yeah. a party. I don't care. Is it for your movie? No. It's, it's a for, roast. It's for a roast. Oh. Whitney yeah. Cummings is there. She I'm going to shoot my shot. Keeps... I'm going to shoot my shot tonight. Ooh. You're going yeah. for Whitney Cummings? Uh, yeah. She is. She... I heard she's tough, dude. She's awesome, man. Yeah. All right, that's a, that's I, feel a... like, I feel like she's going to fillet you. I feel like I think she could turn you into the man you want to be. She's going to Actually? Yeah, because she imagine that? She is a fucking power woman she like, is she's the one she you know she is she's eleanor roosevelt right fdr was nothing right he, i don't think he could barely walk right but that woman drove him carried him drove him around on her back right. on her fucking right. back i feel like and by the way that's what I lesbians mean. used to look like yeah <laughs> <laughs> not the most attractive woman I don't know if right. <laughs> right dude you and whitney Cummings. well yeah huh? she's hot dude i yeah. feel i have this weird attraction to her man i don't know oh, why I, just, none, it's not a weird attraction she's is gorgeous they, are there a lot of comics that are into her like is she like is she like a no like don't a no go zone no. for comics no she's just she's just so powerful is the wrong word but she's just such a a powerhouse I think she intimidates. She intimidates. Both I was gonna men. say, yeah. I, 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 that's what I said. I feel like she's gonna fillet him. Like she, she feels I've to me like some, out of Mike's league almost. I've dealt with some pretty powerful women. I'm not, I'm not heavily intimidated by anyone. I yeah. don't know, Mikey. Yeah. I don't think you know what the issue with the the powerful women you've dealt with is. They're kind of just dumb as fuck. Some of them and are Whit dumb. Whitney is not Whitney's, dumb. No, 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 no. Whitney is. She's not I'm not dumb, dumb either. No, I know. That's why it'll be interesting. You guys would be good. I'm not. I'm, I'd not like that. I'm not counting you out. I just this one seems like. This one seems. A I feel like I want to. Go for it. I want to. I want to see it tonight. Do you think I'm definitely can... drinking now? I'm <laughs> definitely drinking. I'm gonna sit in the sidelines and watch what's it. What's the What's the What's the approach? Do you think that I can like? Do you think I can use tr sorcery? Like uh, Whitney. Whitney is a hit you in the forehead with a hammer type person. Yeah. I talk to you this way. This is how I talk to you. Th I mean, Whitney, gangster move. Whitney uh, hangs out with me and my wife. My wife's turning fifty, and Whitney calls up a fucking longevity doctor and gets my wife sent a bunch of peptides so she can look younger just doesn't even ask my wife oh that's just sends them over and she goes there you go you're welcome it's what we all oh, use she's a yeah she's, she's a, a gift, gangster and, but a gifter she, too oh hardcore gifter Bif, big time. hardcore Ooh. gifter do you Hard. so what do you so so as an approach do you roll in there with a gift do i bring her a gift tonight bring her gift oh wow. like uh, no no and, you don't yeah, yeah, know. no 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 bring no, her a gift bring her whitney's gift. a gift person she has never once come not come to our house without a gift okay she sent georgia a gift to college my oldest in college, sent her a gift to her college. Sends my youngest a gift. Always has a gift. Whitney is a gift giving mother. But don't fucker. they say like opposites attract? Like, shouldn't I do opposite of what she would do? You know what I'm saying? Like opposites attract. Like, should I bring her a, a something she's not gonna like as opposed to like a parking ticket or something like that? <laughs> you know what? You, you know what I'm do. saying? Like you know ruin her do. night. Something with a horse. <laughs> you if you just so? if you saw if because. If you said, hey, I knew I was coming to this thing today. We were with Bert. He told me you like horses. I just walked past this. I hope you enjoy it. It's a horse. S say exactly that. This episode won't come out for a while, and she won't know it's been planted by Bert. So oh, you fuck. want me to bring her? <laughs> so wait, sorry. You want me to bring her a horse? Yeah, like a, like a miniature. Oh, a miniature. Yeah, yes. not a real horse. Not a real horse. And, and say, say it like, like casually. I was with Bert today. He, I don't know. He said you like horses. Mentioned you liked horses, so I got you this uh, thoroughbred. <laughs> you know, it's statuette. Yeah, that'll check <laughs> like, out. Yeah. Cut to four weeks from now, they're Laying in bed, and when he goes, Oh, I didn't know Bert was on the podcast. You're like, ah. <laughs> okay, so they're roasting you tonight. No, they already roasted me. They're just doing the they're screening. Showing. Oh, how was it? Did it hurt your feelings a little bit? Uh, I got blackout drunk. I don't remember it. Yeah, that's probably better. I don't remember it at all. At all. I am visibly wasted. I'm, I just giggle the entire time. And the, the most terrifying part is I spoke at the end and I go, I don't know what I said. <laughs> I have no recollection of speaking into a microphone. For this OnlyFans roast. That is um, impressive. Kesha I, was there. I, I've seen, uh, Kesha was there? Yeah. I'm a big Kesha fan. Who's not? Right. Is what? that like your Whitney Cummings kind of? No. I've got, no, <laughs> oh, you got no, no. oh, you got that wife, though. Yeah, I got a wife. I love my wife. My wife, I told these guys the other day, I'll tell you this story because I, I probably will never be able to tell it on stage. This is what a gangster my wife is. The other night, we're about to have sex, and I shit on my pillow. Yep. And she... Cleaned it, got rid of it, and we still had sex. She's a she's a she's a ride or die. She's a ride or die. Sure. Uh, hold on. I shit on my pillow. 
I, you gotta. Yeah, why that. did you do that? I didn't. Well, I didn't do it on purpose. Yo, Mike's. Mike's. Okay. I'm sorry. This this <laughs> flew under the radar. Mike's agreeance to that set <laughs> with, without skipping a beat. He goes, "What did you say?" Right? Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Cause, 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 no, 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 no. It's a no, ride or die. It's a ride or die. Because I've seen. It's a ride or die. Imagine if you took a girl home, you sat on your pillow to tell her a story. You shit on that pillow. Is that what happened? I was sitting on the story, the pillow to sell her a story. Why did you? And she was she was sitting on the bed, and I scooted up on my pillow. I had James Purse uh, uh, track pants on, and they're very thin, no underwear. And I thought it was a fart. I shit through oh, the sorry, pants. Sorry. Th shit through the pants onto the pillow, through the pillowcase onto the pillow pillow. My wife, I got up. I, I got up. I was like, oh, I shit my pants. I got up to the bathroom. She goes, you shit on the pillow. And I was like, oh, for real? She goes, these are new pillows. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then my wife took, took it off, put it over in the bathroom. I changed my pants, came back, still banged it out. She's a real yeah, dude, a because, gangster. Bro, people don't realize that, that the importance of having a woman who will deal oh. with shit. Bro, if you have a kid and your wife is scared of shit, you, your kid is going to prison. Rogan. You know what I'm saying? Your kid is, is not going to make it, dude. You got to have a mom that's not scared of shit, bro. This is how, I remember Rogan telling me a subtle story about him and his wife where I went, that's love. He said that his wife had a green juice and she was driving home. She didn't feel very well and she threw up all over the inside of their car. And I said, oh my God, what did you do? And he goes, I cleaned it. Yeah, I went, yeah. I went, that's a man. Yeah, you got to. That's a man. See, I would have just, I would have told my wife, you need to clean this. I, I don't want to make any <laughs> judgments about your wife. But in my brief provided by my producer, Dylan, it does say, wife Leanne, yeah. hillbilly woman who manages his life. <laughs> Put that on a fucking shirt. Sure, yeah. My wife is a redneck. No like, way. Re redneck. Where's she from? Discipline your dog with a shovel kind of redneck. Like <laughs> okay. those kind. Okay. Like spit on a light bulb to watch it bubble for fun. <laughs> redneck. <laughs> redneck. Like on our marriage certificate, I don't know if this is in my special or not. This is a true story. We got married in her hometown. Third question, are you blood relatives? <laughs> to which you answered yes. Uh, no, I, I, said, I, said, I said, lady, I go, what do I put for three? And the lady looks at it and goes, well, is you? I go, I don't think we I is. Think so. goes, well, then put down that chain. I go, I'm definitely not right name because that means we is. Yeah. Where's she from? A uh, small town called Bowden, Georgia. Oh, Georgia got some necks. On, on the, Georgia whoa, got some necks, dude. Dude, that... That's like Theo Vaughn level shit, bro. It's, it's way worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's way worse. Yeah. My wife's... My wife's... Uh, there, was a, there was a phrase that they used uh, when they dated, because there were people... I remember her, she had two cousins that were dating, and I go, how, how can that happen? It was it kissing cousins? And they said, they said no, they, they can, but they ain't blood. <laughs> they, they can, can, but they ain't blood. They can, but they ain't blood. Like I mean, it's not sister brothers. Yeah, it's like they, a can, they can fucking have right. kids. I mean, that's that's how it's gonna happen. Yeah. Oh. We don't. There's not much of a pool down here. Your wife ever sink a boat? Uh, no. You ever sink a boat? No, I I tried to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I fucking love your questions. <laughs> I uh, want to do it for Travel Channel because they do these boat sinking. That seems like something you got to do. Yeah, I would love to, but I want to do it with scuba gear and I want to watch it sink and I want to go down with it. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. You should do that. I'm telling you, man, I was, I'm, I, was born, I was born 30 years, too, 20 years too late because my energy is your energy, your age. Like what, I, the things I enjoy watching online i would love to be doing but i'm fucking old man i'm just gonna do movies what what do you mean by that like i, I love I, w I wish i could have been in, in the, like when you guys were in the gold strike of of the internet and making content and like and you guys had all the you knew how to do all the stuff and figured out how to do all the stuff you were born 20 years too early you mean yeah yeah when you said one? 20 years too late i thought you meant like you I wanted to be at, yeah you wanted to be at <laughs> you wanted to be at dunkirk i wanted to be there during civil rights yeah yeah <laughs> no you wanted to be at dunkirk like <laughs> I was born a century. <laughs> Everyone's like, what the, what fuck? the fuck? I told a story one time. You ever fuck up one word, it ruins the story? Yeah. I got into a fight with a guy at a Starbucks on uh, on 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 Wilshire and West, or Wilshire and uh, Detroit Street. You know that oh, Starbucks? God almighty, I got into a fight with a guy in a teal BMW. And I thought it was Louis C.K. initially. Because I thought, I know Louis, I thought it was Louis. So I talked to him, but then I realized it wasn't Louis. But when I and but I almost fought him, and and I told my wife, "Thank God I didn't." Was it was it because of the teal? No, it, no, because he, that would, that would piss me yeah, off. That's, no. that's a color that will it's ruin a shit any color. color. He. But when I told the story to my wife, I didn't say Louis C.K. I said Louis Anderson. 
<sighs> and so my wife's hearing the story, like, I'm gonna beat this dude's ass. He looked like Louis Anderson. Yeah. She was like, Why would you mess with that guy? Yeah. I go, Fuck him. He was in a TLB <laughs> He wanted to talk shit. You'll see what I, man, you realize how bad I would have gotten beaten up not being able to throw a punch? <laughs> I think I think I think being able to throw a punch is a thing any man should be able to do. I had my I, thumbs in. Oh no, oh, you'll come break on. Your thumb, dude, dude. I didn't I knew so little about fighting. Because I'm the guy in college that got punched. Like I'd say the thing, and then there would be just some guy that liked to lick windows and breathe out of his mouth, just go, fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. <laughs> and then I could take a punch, but uh but uh never like I've only punched maybe a couple people in life. How often do you have shit that can permeate your pants within seconds? No, like I still, no, no, I still no, no, have been stuck no, on the fact that no, you were please. able to quickly shart a permeating poop that went through. Oh, oh the pants, majority, I would say, pillowcase and on the pillow. Sixty percent of my uh, feces are liquid. What's your diet look like? Uh, whatever is in front of me. You're on like the Bill Cosby diet, just straight pudding. Yeah, no, I do, I do, I try to eat healthy, but then it, the wheels come off at the end of the night. What's your guilty go-to fuck food? Oh, food. oh, I mean, I can't say no to pizza. Yeah. I can't say no to pizza. But you're not, but where do you eat your pizza? Bucking. Because California got anywhere. no pizza. You've had Dude, good East Coast Dom pizza. No, right? no, no. Domino's, Domino's Brooklyn Come crust yeah, no. is fucking amazing. It's great. It's great. Domino's Brooklyn crust is, I remember the day I saw that. I remember the day I saw Domino's Brooklyn crust. It was during the pandemic. I was with my daughter, Isla. It was 11 o'clock at night and it came on as a commercial. The new Brooklyn crust from Domino's. And I looked at Isla, I go, we should get one. She goes, can we get one tonight? And I was like, let's get two. <laughs> and we got two Brooklyn Cross, and I to this day, it's my, that's my go-to. You make me pizza. sick. Your daughter oh, is it? No, that's she enables you. I think. Oh, we have impulse control problems. How how old is she? Uh, I don't know. Just just 16. <laughs> 60. 60? Sixty. 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 Your daughter's older than you. No, she she during the pandemic. I was telling someone this the other day. During the pandemic, this is how bad her impulse control would be. She would see if she, if I was drinking red wine, she'd sit on my arm or my recliner, grab my phone, get on Amazon, and go, "How much do you think a refrigerator costs?" I go, like a big one? She goes, no, mini fridge. I'd be like, I don't know. Like 150 bucks? She goes, if I told you they were $87, how many would you buy? <laughs> I'd be like, four? She goes, done, son. <laughs> Click. We bought four mini fridges during the pandemic. Why? To put in our fucking bedrooms. What do you mean? Yeah, why? Come what on. kind of fucking <laughs> dude? It was fucking awesome. Everyone had their own mini fridge. We, people were doing weird stuff during the pandemic. Oh my yeah, god. We got weird. We got weird. We got yeah. really weird. In our we house. put a swimming pool in his garage. Wait, you guys were out, you guys were at your a, a ranch during the pandemic, right? Up for a portion of it, but we had a house where all of us lived, like seven of us boys, and I was vlogging at the t at the time. Yeah, and so just to pass the time, we would just do some weird. I don't. I forget all the wonky so stuff. stuff. We did. I can, I can't remember things that well. That's that's what I'm finding because, like you, I, I've done a lot of stuff, but I, yeah. I can't I can't recall. You've done too many stuffs. Uh, too many stuffs. Like when when someone says something, and then you'd be like, oh yeah, I did that too, and they're like, huh? Like someone was talking to Rogan about that it was like this amazing story. I I spent a day, two days in the world's largest cave. Yeah. And I went, Oh yeah, I've been there. Yeah, like that. And then he was like, What? And I was like, Yeah, it's, I mean it's nice, but it takes the wind out of their sails. Yeah, yeah, but you're like, Yeah, I've done that. I've swam with great sh white sharks out of the cage. I've swam with sharks a ton, swam with Yeah, whale but you sharks. remember the stories. That's the problem. Like we like Dude, for me, it's just a blur. Like you I guys, know that I guys, I know I drove off a cliff into a river. I tell you why. Time. I know guys, that, but I if you had asked me like my craziest drug story, I pro I would be like I don't know. Those are hard to remember. Like I drove off a cliff, bro. I went through two telephone poles into a river, bro. Sober? No, I was asleep on Xanax. I'd smoke crack all day, dude. And then I did Xanax to come down, and I fell asleep. How does that? Does Xanax help on crack? Yeah, because it just it's hot. like you know when you have to come down at the end of a long coke fueled night and you have yeah. that anxiety going. No, no, no. I've never done it. I've never. I've, I mean, I've, whenever I do coke, I punish myself. I go, no, no. You asked for this. Yeah. Oh, and you just stay awake and, and like shiver and pull let's the blanket have, over your let's head. Have big ideas. You want to have big ideas? You want to have big ideas? You probably get Everyone's crazy asleep. coke shits because you have bad shitting problem anyways. And I've oh oh. I, I don't You're the I've guy ever, that I've never done coke and not taking a shit immediately. 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 But, but do you know that's from the cutting agents? It's not from the, like, good. Like, if you went to Colombia and met up with, like, fucking Pablo, dude, like, you wouldn't have to shit. You know that, right? It's because they cut it with laxatives. That's okay. So, say we're in Colombia yeah. and we meet up with, like, like, we're in Cartagena. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and they bring out Coke. Yeah. Do you say no or do you say yes? I don't. I can't do Coke. Why not? No, but in that scenario, uh, no, in that I can't. scenario, I, will, I, will, I won't ever okay, do Coke. Okay, okay. They come out and they're You've like, you're going to do it. I will never do don't it. Do it. Don't, and, do and it. And don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Something about, I don't know why, maybe it's like an irrational fear, but like the idea of like a direct line to my, the one thing that I feel that I actually kind of have that's yeah. important, my brain really freaks me the fuck out. It's the yeah. worst drug anyways. It's, it's, the, worst a, it's, the, wor- it's the worst the drug. It's the worst fucking drug. The next day is the worst feeling day I've ever had it. in well, my entire life. Well, uh, ecstasy actually. The next uh, day after ecstasy dude. because you dr- you dr- you fire off every serotonin, dopamine, everything that your brain has is fired off the night before. But I I just, I really do think coke is, is terrible. Uh, I think it's the worst thing ever. The last time I did, Molly was, I got drugged. I got, my buddy p- slipped it in my drink. And, uh, that's a felony, brother. <laughs> that's, a, that's assault. We did a po- we did, we were doing a podcast, and I have the podcast. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! He did it on air. Yeah, yeah, he did it on air. Oh, he's bold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he's, did you start realizing I'm feeling good? Uh, <laughs> an hour in, I said, I said, I feel weird, and he goes, "Do you?" <laughs> and I said, "Yeah." Do you feel weird? And he goes, "Yeah." Is your face hot? And I went, "Yeah, it's a little hot." And he goes, "You feeling good?" And I said, "Yeah." And he goes, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something, and you can't get angry." Um, you're on Molly. And I, went, <laughs> and I went, wait, what? And he goes, you're on Molly. We're both on Molly. I put it in our drinks. We're, we're, we're going to have a great, great night, great night. And I started panicking. I go, I'm on blood pressure medicine. <laughs> like, did you call my cardiologist? Like, this isn't cool. So I called, uh, called a guy, Joey Diaz. You know Joey Diaz? Of course. So I called Joey Diaz. He used to live right around the corner from me. I said, hey, Ari put Molly in my drink, and I'm freaking out. This is within minutes. Joey Diaz says, I'll be there at five, dog. <laughs> Walks in, takes the rest of the Molly. He goes, We're all going down together, cocksucker. What a gangster. I love and then what a gangster. He needs to sit with the sun showering over his shoulders, smoking a joint, and telling me drug stories of where it went wrong, but it, it would they everyone landed safe. Hey, it was going. We thought it was going to be bad. We got a gun in this guy's rib cage. He put him in the trunk. <laughs> hey, it turned out okay. Does anybody? <laughs> does anybody have crazier stories than him? He's no. number one, right? Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz. I know. When when the whole Me Too movement was happening, Joey calls me up and he goes, "Dog, I'm I'm afraid." And I said, "Joey, you're not a sex guy." And he goes, "That's not it. <laughs> they're getting they're getting popped for jerking off in front of chicks. I kidnapped a man." <laughs> I kidnapped a fucking human being. I spent time in prison. He goes, when are they going to start getting in trouble for those? I'm a fucking felon, cocksucker. Oh, no. I go, Joey, I think you did your time. I think you're good. And he goes, I don't know. Dude, Joey Diaz is the greatest human being in the world. He's my favorite guy. I love him like a brother. My daughters only know him as Uncle Joey. They never saw him do stand-up. He was just a guy at our house for every event. And so they only know him as Uncle Joey. And then they saw him do stand up on Fully Loaded. He was on last year. He was on Fully Loaded, and my daughters are like, "What the fuck? This is this guy's life?" And yeah. I'm like, "Oh, that's Joey." Yeah. yeah. Why? You ever you ever break into a chick's house on a Quaalude and need a pussy? <laughs> Lucy Snorbush, motherfuckers. <laughs> he is the greatest. He is the greatest. I love. We you gotta guys. have you, him on. You guys, you guys, dude, circle. He, Your comedian circle. We got. I got really lucky. I had a bad, a bad run in with the dude, and I, I didn't want any friends. Uh, and I was like, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm sure you've had times where you just go, I'm closing the walls. I got my family. I got, you know, whatever. My sisters live out here. We're good. And I've, I've said this before, but uh, Rogan called me. I was at home with my wife. We were about to watch Game of Thrones. I was on the treadmill, and I opened a box of wine. I used to drink a box of wine on the treadmill. And uh, Rogan called, and he goes, what are you doing? And I said, I'm just hanging out. And he goes, come to the ice house. And I was like, um, I think I'm into the night. And he goes, come to the fucking ice house. I go, I think I'm going to just chill. And he was like, come to the fucking ice house. I go, Joe, I'm hanging out. Then Tom calls. He goes, hey, man, it's not, it's not a conversation. Come, stop what you're doing. Come to the ice house. We're all out here. So I go out to the ice house. We used to do this podcast in the, at the ice house uh, called uh, De- ice, Death Squad Chronicles or whatever. We do some of the podcasts. I'm getting ready to go on stage, and Rogan comes up with two shots of Jack Daniels and two beers. And he goes, hey, man, we're trying really hard to be your friend but you're not letting us. And he's like, we like you, and you're a good guy, and we're not going to hurt you. Like, we're not, we won't let you down. We'll always be here for you, but you got to let us be your friend, and you got to trust that we won't hurt you. He goes, because you're a good guy. And I was like, okay. And he goes, can you let us try to be your friend? And I went, yeah. And so we did a shot, and I was like, all right, I'm going to let it happen. 
Because I, I don't know, I just never, I like any time a guy, like I said this, I'm just, this is horrible to say, but when Joe wanted to be friends with me, I was just like, oh, he must be gay. Like, like why would you want to be friends with another man? That didn't make sense to me. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was like, because I was like, you either using him or you want to fuck him. Why would you want to, like Elliot Gould wanted to go to lunch with me one day. And I was like, oh, he must want to fuck me. Right. Why would you want to hang out with me? And and then Joe never has tried to kiss me once. <laughs> How sweet! He's just a great guy. He's been my he's been one of my closest friends now for <laughs> for I don't know how long for fifteen years, and he's the best. I love him. I have a great group of friends. Tommy, even Ari, who drugged me, one of my still one of my closest friends. Uh, you know, we got a great group. But uh, now we're all fucking separated. Everyone lives everywhere else. But yeah, yeah that, that's I, where yeah. I feel like it probably gets hard. But I, I love that Joe did that. I think I think your friends need to reel you in sometimes and have those tough conversations. Yeah, that, that's that's awesome. Especially like you know, because uh, like I have I have a, I, I have a hard time with uh, celebrities. I just I literally just had this conversation with Tom today because uh, Brad Pitt reached out to be friends with Tom. And I was like, and then I, and like, and when things start happening, then all of a sudden celebrities will reach out. And be like, Wait, sorry, he reached out to be friends with them. Is that what you said? Yeah. Like, Wait, well, how, where does all this happen? You want to be my friend? No, because you, know. you, because the the story you just told before that about how Joe came up to you, yeah. he was like, yeah, we want to be your friend. Well, when you start, Dude, I've never, no one's ever come up to us and been like, yo, hey, we, we called well, this meeting today because everyone wants to be, friend. no, wants to be Whitney, friends. No, you're you're Whitney Cummings. You're you guys are a little bit of a wall. There's a lot of guys I'm sure would like to be your friend, but don't are like. They've got their team. They've got their crew. They're a little protective. But they wouldn't do it like that. They would be like, yo, we got a table tonight with some girls. Come hang out. They wouldn't yeah. say to us like, hey, man, like we've been thinking a lot and we've decided as a collective, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we really want to be your friend. But that's, we but won't that's let comics. you down, dude. Comics are sensitive dudes, all of us. We're sensitive dudes and we're hypersensitive to other people's got emotions. It. Got it. Like, I, like I'm always aware. I'm always aware. Like like if you do a podcast, you, you probably don't, maybe you don't care how you perform or if the other guys are liking you. But I, as a comic, I'm hyper aware to make sure that that I'm telling you stories that you'll like or like I want to take care of you. Is that yeah. sound? No, weird? no, we do. No, we yeah. do that. We're yeah. firm believers in yeah. that. If you don't have rapport with your guests and the other co-hosts on the show, you have a failure at hand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we, I get that. Yeah. But I just, that clubhouse mentality is not something that, I don't think it exists in this generation. I don't think it's just Hollywood. I don't, I don't oh, think yeah. they're like, like, remember when you used to have to call your friend's house and talk to the mom? Oh. Hey, Mrs. Peters, like, yeah. you think Johnny can come play today? Like, that shit doesn't happen anymore. Now they're just like, dude, like, did you see that fucking TikTok of that girl fucking, you know, beating up that dog? That shit was crazy, dude. Like, just random, just, it's like a garbage generation. Oh, no one's called, no one calls me, I've never been Mr. Kreischer. Yeah, like, hey, Mr. Kreischer. What do they call you, Bert? Uh, Bert. Or Bert, they called me Bertie Gaga for a while. Your daughter's friends like, call you Bertie Gaga? My daughter's friends were the first ones to call me Bertie Gaga. And then <laughs> they'll call me Bert or uh, Bertrude. Or, uh, <laughs> oh, they trans? Oh, this like, is, like trans this is, yeah, they trans me. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, bro. They turned you No, they, they, don't, they don't call me. No one calls me. <laughs> do they even call you at all is what I'm saying? Or are they just oh, like, I, yo, like, I'll DM you after school. Meet me at the fucking playground around four. Like, they're not asking permission. Kids don't no, ask permission No, no one asks anymore. permission to do shit. Uh -huh. And if you tell them, like, no, you can't go, they'll be like, yo, don't oh. fucking helicopter dad me. Yep. Like, I'm going to make a TikTok. I'm a hardcore rush. helicopter dad, too. Are you actually? Oh, motherfucker, yes. You're a fucking are you kidding me? Black Hawk. Dude. <laughs> Cause I, cause I got good instincts. And right. like when Georgia start, first smoked weed, I knew it. How old was she? Know? It was 15. Oh, that's a good age. I was with Snoop and I found out. Did she smoke with Snoop? No, no. You know what Snoop said to me? He goes, uh, I was bothered by it. And he's like, what's wrong? I said, I don't know. I go, my daughter smoked weed. And he was like, okay, how old is she? I was like 15. He goes, oh, that's not bad. And I said, well, he goes, how old were you when you smoked weed, Bert? And I was like 14. And Snoop, Snoop goes, can I give you some advice from one father to another? I said, please. He goes, don't be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you did it younger than she yeah, did. Yeah, what did yeah. you? He goes, did you think that she wasn't going to smoke weed? And I was like, kind of. And he was like, but you did it. <laughs> and I went, yeah. yeah. And he goes, and you're her father. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And then, and yes. But Snoop's a, Snoop's a, Snoop checks on her every now and then. <laughs> Hey, you smoking get, weed? Go, no, he's like, how's my, uh, what is it? how's my niece doing? Smoking. Yeah. Is she is no. she is she still smoking, or do you have to monitor your? your She's at college. I don't know. I think I hope she's smoking and not drinking. I'd rather them smoke weed than drink. Personally, I really I don't want her vaping. That's my thing. Vaping's bad. I'd, I'd rather her smoke a fucking cigarette. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like, because then you know it's gross. Vaping is like 
they don't know it's gross. Yeah, they think it's yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. Everything smells like Captain Crunch. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yo, you try the new orange Skittles flavor? Like, dude, it's fu- you know, it's they're banning it. It's California like, just banned all you, all flavored anything. For real? So California just banned flavored anything. Fuck. Yeah. So anything you guys with flavor. You guys zinned? What? Zin? No. What? Is that like oh, a, you guys seem like you told Vitamin or mineral or something? Oh no, it's like everyone zins. What? Oh, sins. Oh, the thing. The little, <laughs> oh, dips. Yeah, it's a pouch. Dips. Uh, no, no, it's this thing called Zen. Every dude, every bro I know, Zins. I never met a Zen bro in my life. Either. Oh my god, that's all. Where I'm around. are these bros? These are the same in the kind NFL. Of- Oh yeah. There's a lot of it was it was at the at the Super Bowl. They were everyone was like, "Yo, you got a Zen? You got a four milligram? Oh, six milligram? Fucking nice." What and what is it? Just a it's a pouch that goes into your lip, and you just fucking. But the way you've described it, every time had no meaning. Like you're, the way you're talking about it, could be just like a. Oh, it's, could be, it's, could be it's a nicotine <clears throat> delivery system. It's uh, not tobacco. It's nicotine. It's just a way really to get. Fuck with that shit. I was stuff, somewhere dude. where this was offered to me frequently. Uh, maybe like in Europe. Does that sound? Yeah. Right? Well, that's where they created it. Created it, the, it in Switzerland or Sweden. That's what, who, who initially started doing. This. I was gonna say. It's I think I was. Snooze. I think I was. Oh, that's snooze. what it is. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah. yep. I was in Sweden, and sure. every yeah. every kid my age fucking was doing this. Chicks thing. do it. Yeah, everyone yeah, does yeah, it. Yeah, everyone was doing it. Don't even get addicted to nicotine. Nicotine's so hard to fucking kick. Yeah, that's the that's the mother. My mom got off it. You know how? Oh, hypnotism. Ooh. One session. Do, 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 do. Imagine, dude, and then all of a sudden you don't smuggle, you just don't smoke cigarettes anymore. How weird is that? You could just go visit this dude. He can t- put you into a trance, and the next day you're just something else. Yeah. How fucking You walk out wiping like- your mouth, what come off your mouth. Yeah. Well, it was interesting. <laughs> I don't want to smoke anymore, but I think I sucked that guy's dick. <laughs> That's how they got my mom, bro. That's crazy, dude. That's no, nice. Robin. If you, if you bro, really could, no. if you really could hypnotize people, what are you doing getting them to quit smoking? Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> monetize this monetize, shit. Yeah. Walk into a bank. I think I'll take all the money. <laughs> no, but she smoked for fucking twenty years, bro. I used to wake up every morning. I come downstairs, and my mom be smoking a Marlboro. Can't believe, can't believe Robin and, and like drinking coffee. That's the most East Coast thing. Yeah, we were eating from Jersey, Jersey, Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah, it counts. But yeah. it, yo, uh, Joe hates Connecticut. <laughs> you know about that, yeah, right? Too. Yeah. Joe hates Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. It's like his least favorite thing in the world. Yeah, <laughs> him and he Tom calls went it off a use, uh, They went off and they call it like this useless state that has no meaning or use whatsoever. A, they call it a drive-through state because oh. it's yeah. how you get from New York to Boston and other places. Yeah, well, it's convenient if you grew up in Boston and you lived and worked in New York to consider that a drive-through state. Yeah, but it's not. Connecticut it's not. has a lot to offer, dude. Connecticut's awesome. Best pizza in the world. One of the greatest universities. Ooh. Yale. Oh, Needle- okay. Needless- I was thinking of U- University of UConn, too. Oh, you- they're about to win the fucking yeah. championship. Needless to say, every day, my mom smokes the cigarettes, comes down, same white bathroom. I can still smell that fucking yellowing wallpaper scent of cigarettes in the house. Right? So wait, what's, what's, what does what your days look like? No, like I'm I, curious, like, because yeah. like, when you say that, it kind of paints a picture, and it sounds, regrettably, it, it sounds sexy. Mm-hmm. To, to smoke a cigarette and have a coffee in the morning to start your day. Yeah. Like, I, I look at that and go, that's old school. No one's doing that anymore. No, there's some some people still are, but my day is exactly the same. When I wake up, I have to go straight to the gym. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. I get really bad anxiety. Like, Ooh, I have to go. Yeah. So today, I wasn't able to because I'm high on Benadryl and I had to get to this podcast. So I didn't go to the gym today. So I'm, I'm firing a, a little lighter. Really? Then the rest of the day, usually, you know, I'm on the couch some of the time. And then and then I'll go to sleep. <laughs> That's really? pretty much. What's your, what's your, like, what's your treat <laughs> for yourself? My what? Your treat. Uh, I like porn stars. I like food. I porn like stars, food. Porn I like stars would be fun, man. Well, are you like Chechik? Be... You said earlier. Yeah, well, she's Chechik crazy. offered she... for Tommy and I to fuck her. Yeah, you should. One day I was asleep. <laughs> you should. I was asleep one day and she knocked on my door no. at the house I used to live at. Somebody brought her upstairs because I met. She was one of the only ones I haven't met. I've had a fun time with that community, dude. That, that how much fun? I mean, that's something that like in a parallel universe I would have loved. Well, bro, dude, think about it for a second. Everybody likes a, you know, everybody has their feeling about them, but th- that's sex is Michael Jordan. Like you're talking about, oh. the, you're talking about sex, sex, what men look at is like the most important thing. Sex really, your sex drive runs everything in your life. It's, it really is subconsciously yeah. at least. And you're talking about Michael Jordan. You're talking about, you know, uh, uh, LeBron James. Like that's what those people are. Yeah. So to me, I'm like, dude, like, I don't want to beat them. I want to 
I want to fuck LeBron James, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, so. Like, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, so dude, I didn't. I want to party with Mike. I want to party with Michael Jordan. Cocktails, cigars, gambling. Oh, he's. I'll fucking empty my bank yeah. account to hang with that guy for a night. <laughs> Is that your top? Who's your, like, no. number one go-to? I have a list. I have a list of guys that I would, like, love to party with. Ben Affleck, I would love. I don't but wanna, he's sober, though. I know, I know. That's kind of a bummer. Um. But like, like if you like light fell off the wagon, that would be a fun. Hang. You want to be there when he does it. I want to be there like the the, the second day, you know, like yeah. not the first day. He goes He's too jacked long. now. I seen a video of him the other day. I want him to be sober. I should say that I want him to be sober because that's better for him. But like Tiger Woods, I want to party with him. But he's also you, you I, like drug addicts and alcoholics. Really, it seems John like. Daly, uh, Kelly Slater. I mean, bro, you're talking about just straight fiends. Yeah, I want I want to like. There's a. I would love. I, I mean, I'd love to party with Kim Jong Un. That's a good target. I would like to party. That's a good target for either partying or parties, nukes. So yeah, you think Kim Jong Un? Hundred percent. I bet. I bet. I bet with my creativity and his assets, we could have one hell of a fucking time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but does he? Like, hey, is, Kim, let's make your he, bodyguards fight. Is he down? This isn't the interview, you know. Like, I think I, he'd be down. I think he'd. I think he'd like my brand. Uh, I bet he'd like me. He'd probably like you, but eat like fucking crazy. But where would you would you <laughs> want to do it neut in a neutral territory? No, no, I'll go to him. You actually would go to NK. Yeah, bro. Do you understand what they would do to you there nope. if you if you fudged up even slightly, bro? They would they would toast your toes over you an open paper mache. Yeah, I mean, you it's... ever been origami? <laughs> Have I ever been origami? <laughs> Son, to think about, dude. Think about. Like, what, like, if you got it, like, what's the craziest offer you guys have gotten to, like, go party with someone? So Ooh. I'm sure that you had to have those offers. Like, like, a Steve Jobs goes, my kid's turning 16, huge fan. I mean, we've had some wild run-ins overseas, bro. A lot of the weird yeah. shit that we get into is overseas with, like, some, narco traffickers. Some and fucking, like, some Saudis. We've, yeah. No, no, I no. heard a story, I heard a story, I heard a story, I can't say the guy's name, but I can tell you off air, of... He was, he he got to Jordan, and the Prince of Jordan was like, "Come party with me tonight." And next thing you know, they're in a room full of Lamborghinis shooting machine guns with girls in bikinis. That are like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For and sure. I'm like, I want, I want one of those. I think that's Haram. Yeah, it might I be. think that's Haram. What's Haram? Against the Quran. To what party with to machine party with guns? Machine guns? In, in Lamborghinis, was there alcohol and drugs? Alcohol. I, I want to think there is. I want to. It's not, it's just not, it gives me some Haram vibes. Yeah, because that's that's the thing with the <coughs> Saudis and the Middle East in general. Um, it's it's pretty strict there. Have, well, you, been, have you been to Saudi Arabia? Yeah, 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 yeah. For real? Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Really? It's just, it's just there's just no alcohol. You got to be. Or, well, or, I mean, you can find alcohol. You no, find no, no, no. Here's the weird part, and I don't want to. I'm doing business with them. Okay. See, this is the kind of shit. This is when you say I have a problem saying no. This is where I get. No, in I trouble. said yes immediately. 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 Who the fuck says no? I'm opening a burger shop in Jeddah. That's cool. With them. Okay, let me tell you something real quick. This. They have booze there. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They and they drink, but like, you, it, it's it's not like allowed, dude. You have to be careful about it. Like you can go That's there. Fair. Like it's, when we I were in Iran. when we were in Doha for the World Cup. Like you can. They they like sometimes will be like. Oh man, actually, I don't want to say that. They they sometimes will become a little bit more lax. No, no, no. They were for the. I World know, but Cup. I was gonna. Yes, they like allowed it. They're like, okay, for this time period, like we're gonna allow it. But like normally, I think like if you're an American and you go there, you can go to the American embassy and there's a bar there. And so like that's. Yeah, I don't like, want to hang out with Americans. I want to be in some fucking alley where they've got a goat strung up by its ankles yes. and we're smoking <laughs> hookers Bro. and they're like they're like. Drink and I'm drinking out of a milk carton, and I'm like, whoa, Bro, what will, is this? They will, they will get once they get there. Those countries, their culture is based 100 on hospitality for guests. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. will if they get their hooks in you, Bert. They will, you will be at their house with their families, sitting on a rug. You know, uh, how do you say it with Steve Aoki? Crisscross, crisscross apple, applesauce. Crisscross apple applesauce. Yeah, yeah. yeah, literally dates, eating food coffee. with your Dude, hands. Steve bro. Aoki's got a fucking life. Huh? That's a good, badass life. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tom and awesome, I do. Tom bro. and I do live two bears events. We're like, we'll do it for NASCAR or for the NCAA. I said, yo. Reach out to Live Golf. I want to go to Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I want a fucking party over there. Well, do well. Why don't you come when we're? I'm gonna go back Done. in April. Done. But you, you may Done. be busy. When, when? When? Give me a date. Can you behave? Are you able to behave? Like slightly at least. I mean, like, give me some parameters. Okay. Okay. For example, I'll tell you a, a really quick story. We were flying from uh, Ibiza 
to Dubai one time, right? With a group. I already love this. Thing. Yeah, with a group of friends. Now the night before, those friends, not us, of course, were partying pretty avidly with yeah. a group of high end Ibiza prostitutes and just and just you know gang type people from Ibiza. Well, one of my friends um, had forgotten. Uh, an important fact and when we got to the airport we went through security and he was you know patted down and searched and he ended up having uh he ended up having some like powder yeah. in his pocket all right i'm so, already out yeah so so listen because I, I, I took and, and, i took weed to bali on accident. Yeah, exactly yeah. same type thing so yeah. if you, and i was with my family right and i i and it's it's punishable by death death right no way yeah, yeah and i i had my cigars with me and i said to my wife i said oh shit i brought fucking weed and i was like how cool I didn't, I, that I smuggled weed in and I didn't even know I did it because I was with my cigars. Oh, they didn't, and my wife's they, like, they didn't catch you? My, no. And my wife goes, what the fuck? But, throw it away right now. And I went, I'm going to smoke it. We're in Bali in a rainforest. Yeah. She goes, no, you're not. Fuck face. It's punishable by goddamn death. I had the most insane panic attack then thinking I'm sure. I would have just been taken away from my family. Yeah. And it was like three joints, definitely enough to get you. Whoa. Like well, definitely man, yeah, that's not a, that's an accident. A, well, our guy didn't didn't make it out like that he got caught he's dead he's not dead yes he is he's dead Paris. that's why i had a little bit of trouble telling the story so got okay captured. Yeah. Maybe, you know what just send me just post it on your instagram i'll follow no no he's but, not, no, he's, but fine. The, the, he's fine but they did they did finger his ass Hold yes on. i'm cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know seth rogan uh yeah. i did uh, a, a podcast with him and he said he's only been not high for one day in like the past like 20 years and that was when he went to singapore Oh, you, you cannot just can't, bring, yeah, you just can't, you wow, cannot weed bring wow, weed into Singapore. You just can't take those risks. Yeah, I brought weed into Singapore and into Bali. You're like a, you're like on, almost a on, narco trafficker yourself. On accident, yeah. yeah, on totally on accident. I brought, I grabbed my cigars. That's the thing is like when I travel now, I, I, I have to take my backpack out. Like, do you know how terrifying it was to leave Amsterdam because we have all these fucking drugs on us, and then and then it's not bad drugs, just mushrooms and weed. But then you and you put them in pockets. And then you throw a coat in the thing, and you're like, just go. Yeah. That's, that's what happened to him. That's what happened to our friend. It he, happened to us. You, in taking, when you take a tour bus into Canada, we go into Canada. Uh, very first tour I ever do on a tour bus was uh, body shots. And they said to me, get rid of all your marijuana. They do not fuck around at the border. And I was like, okay. My wife's on the bus with me. It's my very first time. Me, my wife, Jesus Trejo, and our, and our bus driver. So I go, I'm going to get rid of all the weed, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring like a one-hitter so I can smoke. Like a bat. Like, yeah, like a, one bat. Yeah. So I can have a cocktail, smoke, as we listen to music on the tour bus. It's my first night on the tour bus. Well, it just catches up. The, 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 the border gets there so quickly that all of a sudden they're like, we're here. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I haven't even lit it yet. I haven't even hit it. No warning. No warning. And I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. So I run back to the bathroom. I have a, it's a glass one hitter. And I'm trying to blow it the weed out into the toilet. Yeah, the I toilet, can't. yeah. And I, and I break, I drop the thing. It shatters. Oh. I can't, it's a new tour bus. I don't know how to turn the lights on. I'm reaching around. I'm grabbing stuff. I'm throwing it in the toilet. Door opens. Border patrol. Oh, fuck. Everyone off the fucking bus. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife gets up. We go in. We're held for about an hour. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. It's not a lot of weed, but it is weed. I was told to get rid of everything. Guy comes in and he goes, my wife looks at me and she goes, did you bring weed? And I said, no, I did not. I have no <laughs> weed on me. She goes, none. I said, none. She goes, you promise? I said, baby, I swear to God. <laughs> Guy comes in and he goes, you guys are good to go. I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah. Enjoy Canada. It's him and another woman. And they're walking us out to the bus. I said to the guy, I go, hey man, just out of curiosity. Like, what would have happened if we did have weed? What? And he goes, you mean like, hypothetically speaking, if someone had brought a glass one hitter <laughs> and broken it in the bathroom no fucking way. and put it in the toilet <laughs> but didn't know how to flush the toilet? I said, yeah, what would have happened? And he goes, I would have said, it's a pleasure meeting the machine and I would have flushed the toilet. You got you. lucky. You're lying. I swear to God. Oh my no shit, my, fucking my, way. My wife goes fucking red. She goes, you brought fucking marijuana? And I was like, no, no, no. It never happened, right, sir? And he goes, enjoy Canada. Oh Got my on the bus. God. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, this machine thing has transcended every country. Dude, I, I was... <laughs> The uh, I, the, um, I mean, yeah, like I, I whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever you just did. Said. You like Canada? I love Canada. I've never been. Oh, for real? Not allowed. What? Oh, no, you are now. Now I just got my my felonies yeah, uh, pardoned. pardoned. For real? Yeah, because I it had been so long, I had to go through a legal process and have them pardoned. So Joey I'm no Diaz, longer... Joey Diaz can't do that. Can't go to Canada. Well, how? But it's been a while since he's killed. Yeah, I think someone, his is like it? It was, his was like a pretty <laughs> aggressive felony. Yeah, murder. Oh. Well, no, the violent felonies <laughs> the take a while longer. Was it the kidnapping? Joey, Joey Diaz. No, it was. 
kidnapping. Yeah. <laughs> he kidnapped a man. Yeah. So yeah, I think it was it was pretty, it was a pretty aggressive felony. <laughs> Yeah, I think those take longer to get parties. <laughs> Other than a DUI. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you drink a gallon of Kool-Aid a day. Is that still? Yeah. Dude, can I tell you I fucking love these primes? Oh, you like primes? I really do. I really do. We, I was with my daughters when we were at the beach, and they had a big stack. And I was like, oh, shit, this is uh, his drink. And I grabbed it. I grabbed a bunch and put them out at the beach and in the fridge. The next morning, I'm hungover. And I wake up and I go, I'm gonna try one of these. Now I love liquid, uh, uh, liquid IV. Yeah, liquid IV is a great drink. Yeah, yeah, this has all the fucking electrolytes, all the fucking salts, all the taste, everything. I fucking love these things. Thanks. We man. have them on our tour bus. We have them on no our way. office. No way. We have them on our office. No way. We've got the energy ones at our office too. Let's go. I fucking love these, dude. Dude, thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, they're, they're, they're fucking great. They're great for hangovers. They're great for sickness. They're great for hangovers. Yeah. They're great for fucking hangovers. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, I love them. Okay, so I got a gift for you then. Oh, well, you, 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 the guys that run Prime, the whoever is in charge has been hitting me up. Send, send they me send stuff? it to All right, me. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll keep you stocked. But I got something for you today because I heard you drink a gallon of Kool Aid today. I love Kool Aid. Okay, but we got you a gallon of Prime. They don't make these. And we just assembled this today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, guys. <laughs> this is so pretty. This is almost as cool as a dinosaur bone. <laughs> Suck on that, Tom Segura. I, I, we ain't I got him shit. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna give it to you at the beginning of the podcast, but I forgot. That. And so this we were gonna prompt so... you to drink all of it, but, uh, you know. I could go through this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is my favorite color yeah. red. <laughs> so that's, that's, you know, it's not a Whitney Cummings esque horse, but that's my gift. Oh, I gotta to get that horse still. Just something horsey. Yeah. Just on horse like. Just, yeah, it's just something horse like. And then just be like, I hope you like it. And then just walk <laughs> away. Yeah. And just be slick. And then she'll be like, who give, her, give her a she, wink or something. Well, she'll, be, that we, she'll go, who was that guy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because we met the other uh, comedian uh, uh, at George's house. Come on. The, 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 I, here's the problem. Chelsea Hand. Chelsea, Chelsea Hand. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Chelsea. So, so, so she, when I met her, um, now I'm scared of all female comedians. So. <laughs> she, bro, she, her energy was just like, dude, like, bro, I was like, how you doing, Miss Handler? Good to meet you. And you called her Miss Handler? And she hit, she hit me with a fly swatter, bro, <laughs> or some shit, dude. Like, dude, I was, I'm scared of that. That woman, woman will run through your 100%. life. Hundred percent. I won't, I won't fuck with Chelsea Handler. Nah, like, she scares. We'll DM me, bro. and stuff every now and then. She'll send me a DM or something. But she's a gangster. Yeah. Well, because she's dating uh, Joe Coy, right? Not anymore. Oh shit, that. He's still alive though, yeah. Yeah, he's still he's alive. Still because alive. dude, but you, you notice he hadn't talked shit about her. No, he can't. <laughs> I'm, Bro, just, I'm just saying he didn't talk shit about her. That's what you <laughs> like. If my if my wife and I divorce, I'm trashing her yeah. up and yeah, down. Yeah, you can't do that. My next her. special is called Leanne Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and my hillbilly wife sucks. No, dude. Uh, I feel it's funny as I I'm like I could definitely tell you. I f I feel like I'm teaching you how to fuck my sister though. Because like I go, I can tell you what to do to Whitney to, to like, because I know what she's into. I know what her interests are, and I, she'll be busy as fuck tonight because yeah. she'll be running around trying to organize everything. I mean, I, this is a, this is like low key a dirty move because I love Whitney, but I like you. Yeah. But what you do is you just walk up to her and go, "Let me know how I can help." Oh, she'll like that. Wow. She'll be like, it she'll feels be like, like acts of servitude with her, are big dude. Wow. Like if I, if, she's Whitney's a person of service. Got like it. She is consistently well once again i feel like I, the opposite attract thing is big so i oh. feel like i want to fuck her night up wait, a little bit hold on don't you wait do you are you attracted to different people than you oh wait i am too yeah i'm not attracted yeah, to a lot of six dead inside men. like he's like my best friend and he's he's <laughs> like a like a corpse but are you attracted to him Dude, this is my impression of, i can't wait for <laughs> tom to do this podcast i'll be tom do it go uh, ask me a question i tom. got it have you ever met hasbla well, why the fuck would we invite no, him on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> because every now and then he'll give you something good. And oh. you're like, God damn it. Why didn't you do that the oh, whole time? Oh, okay, okay. He, did, he told me a story about his son that has me laughing to this. I, I, I think of it f fucking once a day. It's one of my favorite stories. <laughs> he's, he's a great, he's a great uh, play partner. Like he's uh, fun to like you when you guys play together. Yeah. Like he's that. Okay. 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 And so you just gotta you gotta figure out how to get him to play with you. We'll get him. And then once he gets him to play with you, you have a fucking blast. But there's been some times where people go, "Man, that's a girl on. He's a tough interview, huh?" <laughs> and I was like, "He didn't like you." Uh, <laughs> no, we'd get him comfortable. Yeah. Me and him, our playtime is uh, rapid fire. Like when we get in rapid fire questions mode, we we can go for like twenty minutes and just confuse the shit out of somebody. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Yeah, you're gonna have to sit. No. What? Why? Why? What, what's your why, problem? Dylan? What's going on? Why are you doing this? Yeah, 
Who cares? Who it's cares? crazy. He's not dude. actually going to drink out of the gallon. What a shit gift. <laughs> this is why we don't get a lot of guests back. <laughs> Look, it's it's Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. I'm working on this one. I'll get, I'll get into it in a it's second. Not even, <laughs> it's, not even, it's not even branded correctly. You, you sound like Bill Cosby on a date night. Yeah, drink, drink from drink that one. Drink from that one. No, 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 no. Dude, I think Winston Churchill's here right now. Winston Churchill is here. He's at the door. Winston Churchill's at the door. <laughs> Is that? I, I just pulled my leg looking. Is that, is that, was that, that that noise, dude? And then yeah. he just, and then he just you hear that. I heard, a, I heard a crash. He just That's my <laughs> Jesus, who is that? I think it that was, was Winston, Winston Churchill. Churchill. Is this one of those party houses that you guys used to get in trouble for having? Not this one. Oh, we didn't. We weren't that group, by the way. We weren't the no. The, well, his brother was the one that would light pools on fire. But no, guys, no, anything bad that ever happened was the, that was, the yeah, brother. That was not. So well, no, anything. I, I thought all your houses you get in no. trouble. Like neighbors would be like. You can't park your car. In that the- was that was Jake. Yeah, he did. Jake also threw, and I'll stand by this. One of the best parties LA has ever seen. Well, that was a crazy really? in his yeah. Calabasas house one night. Yeah, I saw some weird shit then. Yeah, everyone did. Yeah. Everyone. It was just a weird conglomerate of it, people. It was. It was. Um. It was real life Project X. Yeah. There, really. There, there was a fifty foot, twenty foot dirt bike ramp. Dirt bike guys doing. There was a boxing Shut match up. in the back. People Style were, bender. I, I, I was wrestling. Style bender. Yeah. No, no, ran, random celeb showed up. There was a the. Um, people Warrior were, was filled with uh, a shitload of people. DJ boxing, people sitting on there top was of boxing. Uh, basketball hoops. Like, it was nuts. Bats I never nuts. had an LA party like that. I don't think. You no, that's that's thinking? that's why it was nice, Bert. It it didn't feel like an LA party. It felt like you were back home at some sort of college fest party at yeah. night. That was but that with sh- hot sh- with that like shouldn't hot have shits. been happening. And somehow, even though at the time he was just like a YouTuber kid, yeah. I think we both were. The celebs caught hold of it, wanted to see this 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 chaos that was this you know two acre property where every ounce was filled with someone or alcohol. Did you ever go to the Playboy Mansion? No, I did. I did. I yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah. Sorry. It was it was cool. I went on the on the decline though. You yeah. know, I I didn't get to go during peak Playboy. <laughs> yeah. Was I'm Hugh sure, dead sure. when you went, or was he still alive? I, he was alive the first time, and then. But I'm sure you went. You probably have no. I went there. I went. I didn't. I went to. To work, I do like uh, they do like radio shows, Playboy Radio. We did an interview with Hugh Hefner, and they're like very specific about what questions you were allowed to ask. Oh yeah, I hate and, those. And I was like, I was, I didn't care. You just asked. Well, I was place. married with two kids, so I didn't care if I never got invited back to the Playboy. Yeah, mansion. yeah, yeah. So I was like, and it was Hugh Hefner. I'm gonna get my minute to talk to him. Yeah. Right. And the first thing I said was, it was not on the list, but I said, "How many hours do you sleep a night?" And he goes, "That is a fantastic question." <laughs> Oh, nice. Because you know I used to be addicted to amphetamines. <laughs> everyone's like, whoa. See, that's wow. why you ask the weird yeah. question. And you bro. can see the woman in the back going, stop, stop the yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, 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 this is a great question. Because <laughs> now I, I don't take amphetamines anymore, but I love Diet Pepsi. I have about 12 a diet. Oh, I see what he's doing. He's, and, he's yeah. doing smoke bombs. That's and what that so, is. But uh, his uh, his hands, ice cold. Oh, uh, because oh, he probably was on, the, he was on the decline. Yeah, no, he was he was he was lucid. He was big like, dude. He was a big dude. Really, you yeah. have to really. He was a tall dude. So it's like, but I but I walk away with things <laughs> like I was uh, uh, surprised you guys were as tall as you were when I walked in. Like yeah, I I, I, I seen it. I've seen. I figured you were, but I didn't know. We get that a lot. That's the. I place. get that a lot. That's oh really? People go, how, how tall are you? A six one. Oh shit! You are. Th- I I must not have caught that. Yeah 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 yeah. They say, dude, you're a lot bigger in real life, right? Yeah. Yeah. You go to do you go to LA parties like still? No, I've never seen because because they still do like good parties in the hills. I go to them yeah. from time to time. They go late, it's fun. You see cool shit at them, but I think sometimes back to like what the parties were like in like the sixties, like when like the problem is the phones, Bert, because everyone has phones now. Well, no, but it's that is the problem too. But also just people aren't as cool as they were. Like, bro, can you imagine going to a party? No, at like no, the mom, Mike, it's at, because mom, of the phones. Hold on a second, it's always gonna be boiled down. Fuck the, the phones. phones. No, fuck no, your it's, phone. It's, it's the phones. If you I'm have talking about Mama Cassie and you choked on a ham sandwich, bro, fuck the phone. Talking about telecommunications companies, Verizon. This is nothing to do with you. Not gonna fucking say they're talking about fucking sixties rock. But you think that the because phones are out, that people have changed the way they behave? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You have. No, he's You're, right, but that's anything not can be a liability. Anything can be posted. You can't live in the moment. You can't have fun without fear of being recorded. I go to posted but, and, and, but and online permanence is is horrifying. Some of the parties I go to, people don't care, and I've and and usually that's in Scottsdale. If you go to a party in Scottsdale, <laughs> the people don't care, dude. I oh, went to one, oh, dude. Oh my god, they got cocaine everywhere all over the table, and there's people do, doing like in the background, like. Dude, I'm at a party and there's dude in the back just fucking ripping a goocher, dude, like a fucking two foot wow. monster. Doesn't give a shit because they're from Arizona. Just, yeah. What do they have to think about? <laughs> we were, I don't have anything to fucking think of. Fucking the, Arizona, dude. Who was the football player's house we went to in it in uh, 
Pete? Eli Manning? No. <laughs> this guy, uh, Gabe Davis knew him. And he was like, let's go to his house. He's a big football player and, and the nicest guy. Like as like idiots, me and Shane Gillis walked in and went and introduced ourselves. Sean Hi. Merriman? No. Oh, thank God. I forget his name. He was a big fan. It was one. Who? What? Oh, Saquon Barkley. Saquon? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's and it was. He's on the scene. For it sure. was fucking. It was one of the coolest parties. The most beautiful women I've ever seen sure. in my entire life. I'm talking straight up assassins. New York or assassins. LA? Assassins. It was in, at the Super Bowl. It was in oh, Tempe. Got it. And it was, I mean, there were women. I've only been in trouble one time for talking shit about my wife. It was about Ch Ch Chick. I said on the podcast, I said, I said, this, it's interesting with her. I feel like I would be helpless. Like, I feel like if she wanted to fuck me, I wouldn't be able to stop it. Uh -huh. And my wife was like, well, hold on. She was like, I, I don't like that state sentence because then you're saying you'd fuck her. Yeah. I said, no, I'm just saying I'm talking in the hypothetical. She's like, yeah, but you're saying that she's like, you've never cheated on me. Why would you say that? You'd and hypothetically I, fuck Hypothetically, her. Yeah. hypothetically, it's like her and Christy Mack. I've seen them both in person and you're just like, I, I feel like I'd be powerless. I feel like it, with the, with you're that, into weird that, shit, dude. I can tell just by no, you, you dude. Oh. Chechik is the grimiest out of all of dude. She does wild shit. She dude. does wild shit, and yeah. that's and after you told me about flying dildos and all yeah. that shit, you're a sick fuck, Bert Kreischer. I might be. I might be. <laughs> but those there were some women at Saquon Barkley's house that were. I mean, I was a ghost to them. They didn't see what I. I'm a ghost. I, I'm I'm a apparition. Just some 50 year old white dude floating in the background. They didn't even know that I existed. I wasn't an NFL player. I wasn't covered in diamonds. These were, there was one woman I think about roughly once a week <laughs> who had a dragon tattooed down her face and throat yeah. and a dark black chick. And you could see the dragon. I'm, I, I wonder what she's doing. Like yeah. I just randomly go, wonder what that girl's doing today. She was an assassin. Yeah, maybe she actually is. <laughs> I, but I, the only reason I was asking, I just think sometimes about my choices in life in terms of partying because I got, I did all my like hardcore drug use in like Bridgeport, Connecticut, and it was oh. like 26 degrees out, and I was wearing like a you know like real shitty clothes, and I think to myself sometimes, imagine if I had like paused it. And taken those eight years and done the drugs now. Dude, you got Like, chipped. imagine I'm smoking crack at the addition in West Hollywood. Oh, just imagine. You know what I'm saying? To, you never got to do cocaine in, uh, in L.A. Never. <gasps> and, and never will. Up, and end, never and will. end up in Malibu and watching the sunrise with a bunch to, of chicks. Never yeah. be able to do And being it. like, this is great. And one girl's like, I got some great edibles that should pull us down. And Can't you're like, do it. And then you get into a fucking Lamborghini. Oh, you'll never do it. I'll never do it. It's like it's like stuff. Bobby Kelly is a comedian, a good friend of mine, and he quit drinking when he was like 15, 16. And I go, <laughs> I go, I go, so you never got to have like a specialty cocktail. And he was like, No, I just drank like whiskey out of the yeah, bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, Wow, you never got like a martini or like a, a or you never had bottomless mimosas? Like that breaks my heart. What could have been? What huh? could have been? Uh, like I still could do drugs. I won't. I won't, but that's the cool thing is you don't want to, but but you never got <coughs> the LA moment. Well, it's just tough, dude, because it's drugs. not. Too, it's not. It's not too late for Mike because no, yeah, he does. Is. If he does relapse, can't and say then, that. And <laughs> you can't. The issue is this, dude. If he, if well, you do, you do drugs, drink alcohol, you do drink alcohol. It depends on the year that you ask me. I will sometimes, but my here's if, this. if you make it out, though. I'm saying yes. But what year? You can write a sequel. What age? What age can you say? I'm California. What oh, age can you vital. say? You can write a sequel. The six sixth vital. vital. Yeah. It become a become a. No, nah, I need to go the opposite author. way because I, I, you know, I've been on. I'm the, just kidding. I've been a, on. No, I know that, but I just extremely sarcastic. No, but I need to go like full on because I'm I'm, I'm a a good example of of yeah, getting he, he out. Made it out. Well, he made it out. Well, you don't understand is that how sometimes you may say like feel like you're telling this. I wanted to say this earlier. You may feel like you tell that story about you getting out of drugs a lot and people have heard it. I really you don't, don't understand, but no, but you said that. That's why yeah. I was, the only reason I'm saying that. But you don't understand that people are catching that story on the day they might need, might need to hear it. Yeah, 100%. that's why it's important. So, yeah, that's why yeah. it's important to tell it. Yeah. Like, I, I always feel bad because I go, even having kids, like, and watching my daughter's friends party, I, I always feel like, you know, don't do as I did. Because, like, I'm, I'm, I got really fucking lucky. For whatever reason, my brain is the brain that didn't get addicted to alcohol or didn't mm -hmm. get addicted to coke, didn't get addicted to marijuana. I may drink too much, but I don't have a drinking problem. And and I get, a, I, I operate at a very high level I work really fucking hard. I get up early. I work out. I I enjoy life. That doesn't happen for everyone. No, yeah. Not everyone yeah. gets to do that. Not everyone gets to go. Not everyone gets to go like 
I won't. I I'm gonna get a party bus and go to a premiere of a roast tonight and watch you hit on Whitney Cummings, and hopefully right. we'll hang out with with fucking. Uh, Jennifer Aniston, Adriana Chechik. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of fucking ballers that'll be there tonight. Oh, oh I really? Think, I think uh, Foo Fighters are coming. I think Dave Grohl's going to Where is for, it? I asked him for a picture. Dave so. Grohl? No, where, where's the event? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Right now, are you coming? <laughs> where's Dave Grohl? <laughs> you like Dave Grohl? I, I don't know who that is. Wow. Bert, please ignore that. Wow. Put Bert, please. Wow. please. Bert, Bert, please. Sorry. Bert, please. Oh, Bert, please. So Bert, sorry. please. I have to do a podcast with him. Please stop, Bert. Don't just if act there like it didn't happen. Goes my stop, hero. Bert. Bert, stop. He doesn't know the song. I, I know the song. I know okay. the song. Of course. I asked him for a picture one time. He said no. Dave Grohl. Yeah, I deserved. It. He was with his kid. I, it was. I don't get. I don't get starstruck. I got starstruck when I. It's met him. Dave fucking Grohl, dude. Uh. The maybe the biggest fucking rocks. One of the biggest rock stars in the history of the planet. Bro. Well, I I uh, I think I'm. I thought I was gonna be indisposed, like working out, rehearsing. Uh, for, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going down a fucking zip line. That's how I'm entering my 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 match. I'm going down uh, a zip line. So 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 I I don't know. Like if if I'm free, maybe. I, you know what? You know what? As well, I'm I'm super antisocial. Some currently I am. Why? I think because I'm so sober and I have a girlfriend. Are you sober? Sober? Super sober. Why? Because of training. Oh, for oh yeah. You I just want to do well. Yeah. I think I think uh, I think I could do something really special if I just like decide. And I think I've made the decision. So I guess I'm just boring sober athlete guy now. No, it's not. It's not, dude. What what you do is fun to watch. So with whatever you got to do so that I enjoy it, because I enjoy it. Just keep doing that. I'm gonna be honest. That's how it works. No, no, no. I, that's that's like the seed of my uh, dedication right now. Is I know I have the ability to create moments and memories that last forever in someone's dude, life. That's pretty cool, dude. I look at it like when I tour, I just upped my production package, right? So I have my lighting package, and I spent a little extra money, and I and it was and it was going to cost more. But I thought, you know, I want I want to make things special for people. Not a lot of times entertainers think. How can I make it the best thing that they're going to get? Mm. Sometimes people go, how much money can I get? Mm. Give me the bag. I want, I want them. I'm not even saying like, like on Fully Loaded, we don't make any money off the door. Me and my, my family, we put all the money back in the festival because we want it to be amazing for all the comics. We have a gangster list of comics on there. Tiffany Haddish, Louis Black, David yeah. Tell, Big J. Oakerson, Shane Gillis, Mark Norman, Dan Soder, uh, fucking Rosebud Baker. I mean, it is a gangster. Jim Norton, I mean, it's a fucking gangster list. It's about the event. It's about it, 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 enhancing people's experience in life. I, I mean, it's, it's why I drink, really, because I, I love to fucking take it up. But, yeah. it's, but when you do that, when I saw you in the whatever the one was where you were the fucking purple tights and you came flying off the fucking top rope, I went, dude, that's, I mean, I watched, I ended up going and trying to find the match on, the, on fucking oh, Mike. So cool. I was like, so whatever you got to do to enhance those moments for people, fucking do it yeah, because that's what life's about important. i think it's important it, it lasts gonna, forever man dude. i was gonna come on in a zip line for this tour from <laughs> no on way stage, on you stage. should well no here's oh. the problem they put you in the fucking zip line like when the, they can't like they gotta take you up there and so you're sitting there watching the opening comics in a fucking harness going like oh, fuck. oh you gotta wait for so them? yeah i gotta watch these guys hack I thought, <laughs> no, 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 no. i thought you, you were gonna say you're that. gonna come in for a zip line for this po podcast no dude cool. i was uh, i wouldn't do you know, the world's fastest zip line they have in vegas they're called flight lines you go like fucking 150 miles an hour seems safe uh the first the very first person <laughs> to ever do it the woman lost four toes really uh, yeah. what <laughs> First person, <laughs> first fucking person. Wait a second. Lost four fucking toes. <laughs> that is such a <laughs> such a nuanced injury. <laughs> it was why? How? Because they said they now have a rule. Oh no. <laughs> oh, she like dangled her feet too low or something. You gotta like keep your legs to your chest. You gotta keep what it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she had them in. And so her. So there's a there's a uh, like a a, a a like a. a a, Bun, what is it? A called? stopper? Yeah, but it, you know, like, and it compresses, and it shot her up, and it, and her feet, toes went into it as it compressed, Woo! snapped them off, Woo! dude. And then we did it, we did it that day, and you, what happens is you get a tailwind. So if you get a tailwind on one of these things, you can crank up pretty you, fucking you fast. fast. And so we got a tailwind. There's a storm coming. We're up in the fucking. There's electric. There's metal everywhere, and they're like, we got to get out of here. Last one. Let's go. I went flying so hard, I racked my testicles insanely on it Ooh. and then i shot back out in the middle of the canyon Ooh. and we're sitting there while the storm came in waiting because now they're like how do we get them in 
Because you're all the way in the because you hit it and then you go shoot back slingshotting back. Oh yeah, this this thing is yeah. a liability. Dude, yeah, fucking zip lines. It suck. It's when in doubt, spread them out. Is fucking... <laughs> hey, hey. I gotta go. Okay. That's it. I gotta go. Okay. I love you. I don't we'll see you tonight. <laughs> I love you. I, I wish you I wish I had a smoother out. No, that's perfect. No, Bert, this has been great. Hey guys, this has been uh let me tell you something. I love Andrew Schultz, but and I was I was shell shocked after that podcast, and I would not want to do any podcast. I told <laughs> I told Tom I'm never doing anyone's podcast, and I was bummed because I was really excited to do this. I was like, I'm not fucking doing it. But I'm you guys like gave me faith in fucking podcast. Yes, thank you yes. so much for this. Yeah, dude, thanks for having us on, guys. Uh, if you want to see Bert's new movie, The Machine, Memorial Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend, Razzle Dazzle, streaming right now on Netflix, and your tour, uh, Top Soft World Tour is finishing up. Uh, fully loaded is in the summer, and then we'll pick it up again in the fall. Absolutely crushing it, See guys. You gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you, Bert Kreischer. And thank you for listening to this episode of Impulse. We love you. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.